Hi, everybody. Hello. We're the Skeleton Crew, and uh, a DLC pack was announced over the Thanksgiving holidays, and we weren't able to make a video uh, that's an hour and 15 minutes long about our responses to 30 seconds of video footage. Um, we are sure you're all very disappointed about this, and I don't mean that We got several comments that, we, we that they were disappointed that we didn't put out a three-hour video about a 20-second trailer. <laughs> Right, and had I not been trying to spend time with my family that I love very much, I would have gladly made such a video. But Selfish um, bastard. I know, I know. But we've got a video for you now. So we're going to do um, what promises to be a video that's a little bit longer than we anticipate or want it to take, but we want to do justice to all of these new creatures that have been added because I'm really excited about this DLC. I think I've said this a few times, but I think this DLC is going to make me start playing this game again because... Yeah, me too. Well, you know, it, I don't mean to sound like I've soured on the game, but ever since starting this YouTube channel and playing it for work, I haven't had much desire to play it in my downtime. But sure. um, I, I actually kind of want to make a park now that there's a couple of really cool new dinosaurs in it. So we're going to talk about those guys. And we're going to talk about some of the new skins that have been added as well. And we're going to uh, see if any of them cause us to adjust our rankings. But before we do anything, I'm going to say a few things to you. One of them is my perpetual exhortation that you should like this video and comment on this video. Comment early, comment often. Help us in the algorithm. We are trying desperately to clout chase. Even if you don't Please, like the video. If you don't like the video, like it so that we know you're doing it ironically, and then leave a comment telling us that you like the video ironically. And then unlike the video and re-like it. These things all help us, maybe. Who knows? The YouTube and algorithm is inscrutable and obscure. Um, if you like the videos that we're making, feel free to subscribe to The Skeleton Crew. We have new videos come out every week, which we have amazingly achieved for over a year now. which Or almost a year now. Almost a year now. Next week is going to be the one-year anniversary of us starting to release content. And we're really and boy, happy do we we're have to share that anniversary with all of you. Something fun planned for you. Yeah, and you know what's really funny? Because of the linear nature of time, you will experience that video uh, after this video. But we recorded that video last night. We're, <laughs> it is a, a little tricksy we played on you. Uh, I, it, it's, it's amazing. We're all struggling to keep the release schedule straight in our heads now because our schedules have gotten infinitely complicated. Around we the also holidays. recorded the one that came after that before yes. this. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we we're Benjamin things. buttoning it's here. Same Yes, succinct. The other thing that I should let you know is that I'm Dr. James Snapley. I'm a postdoctoral researcher somewhere and somewhere else. And both of those places are North Carolina. Specifically, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and North Carolina State University. Fascinating. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Uh, my name is Amelia Silo. I'm a PhD candidate. Um, also, I guess technically in two places when you think about it. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History, but the school at the museum is the Richard Gilder Graduate School. My name is Scott Johnston, and I am not in two places, but I am in fact two things because I am both the fossil preparator and technician at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology. Excellent. The vertebrate paleontology variant of both of those, by the way. I am uh, Alex Rubenstahl, a PhD candidate at Yale University and currently celebrating uh, a new holiday called uh, the second day Henry Kissinger is in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, don't pour one out for him. I'm Dalton Meyer. Depending on what your conception of an individual is and the boundaries of things, I am possibly in one place. I am possibly in multiple places. I am possibly in all places and possibly MU. But where I am for sure is at Yale University where I'm a PhD candidate. And together, we're the Skeleton, we're the skeleton, skeleton Crew. crew. We're the skeleton crew. That was our worst one yet, I think. In terms it might have been. Yeah. So you're you were muted. <laughs> well, that explains part of it. <laughs> Never mind. You don't know how behind I was. I was trying to tell you I was behind because I'm looking at a drawing of Dunkel Osteus. That's really cute. Oh, well, Amazing. that's a good reason. But it was very funny to see you mouth the word like, oh, no, or whatever you just said. 
Because I don't know if you know this, Amelia, but your mouth is very expressive when you speak. Good. Like, I like I could hear what you said without hearing it, and I think that made it much funnier. You, got you think Defoe, that's a consequence Defoe of face. like hanging out for three years? Possibly. I think some people move their mouths more when they talk. Also, and I oh, think oh no, definitely. You know, like some people kind of just talk like this, and it's really hard to know what they're saying from their mouth movements. And some people are cool, and they don't do that. They have <laughs> wide, giant, wide open visages. Um, and I. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F- are you I'm hopped saying? up on so much cold medicine right now. <laughs> he's leaning. Oh no, he's leaning. Yeah, well. yeah. Here's here's a little peek behind the curtain, everybody. I'm sick right now, and there's a lot of Advil, some Sudafed tea, coffee, and a pound of tortellini in my body that are all trying to <laughs> stabilize my biochemistry. They're all fighting for dominance. And so we're going to see how this video goes. Right? He is sick. He's an addict. I don't, I don't know why. I just had the picture of like someone trying to sneak, like like a dog that won't take its medicine, just someone putting like cold medicine in the tortellini and then just giving it to James. <laughs> it's just it's Italian like osmosis Italian jokes. Italian stink of medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of taking our medicine, let, let, let's go review some of the, the previous critters that we've talked about on this channel before that have gotten a little bit of a glow up in this new DLC. And by a glow up, Indeed. we mean their alternate designs are now able to be pretty. Indeed. I like pretty. What a segue. I like a pretty light. Let's take, we'll take the monorail. All That's the way not over a segue. To what I call old land. But it's full of things we've already talked about. Old. And are also old in geological time. And are old. Are, now, who would we like to start with? Well, uh, this is the beach if we're going to old land, we should probably start at the beach, which is Pteranodon. This is, the, this is the park that makes you old. This is, this is the cage that keeps you old. This is. And here come some old folks to their old folks' home. <laughs> they do look like old men. Yeah, they do. They've got that muscular old man body, as we said uh, in a video we released almost a year ago now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, man, so I, I've, I've noticed that they, they've done my favorite thing and given... Um, given this new kids. Pteranodon model, actually, like, some nice colors on the crest. Mm-hmm. Which makes me incredibly mm. happy. Mm. Where does this friend currently sit in our ranking, friend? This friend, because we had the foresight last time of ranking the abomination that's the Jurassic World Pteranodon separately from the wonderful but toothy and problematic child that is the JP3 Pteranodon. Um, so the Jurassic World Pteranodon is in D tier, where it belongs and where it will stay. But D the Jurassic the Park 3 Pteranodon is in B tier. Okay. Mm. All right, well, let's not, let's not mince our, you know, we've got a lot to get to. Let's, uh, yeah. I'll, when I first saw this design, I thought they had gotten rid of the teeth in the mouth for some of the alts, but I was only looking at a low res version. They did not, um, sadly. And whereas that might have warranted, I think, l- launching it upwards into the e- even higher stratosphere, uh, all this has done is made them a little prettier. And I thought they were pretty already. What did I give it last time? Like a B? Okay, Amelia and I gave it an A. Everybody else gave it a B. Okay. Oh, like maybe a low A. It's like it's nice, but a lot of my issues with it were model issues, like the teeth and some of the weird proportional stuff. I'm gonna say low A. I'm feeling I'm feeling good today. I would personally keep my ranking at an A. Um, I like. I like it, but I don't think it dramatically changes how much I like it. It certainly doesn't make it an S, but it definitely doesn't make it any worse. So, it, A. Am I next? Uh, we you shouldn't go in first. any particular order. Yeah, I think, yeah, you should have been first, so go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Flying by the seat um, of her pants. I like these a lot, and I don't care about the teeth, so I'm going to bump it up to S. This blue skin is really pretty. I like it. Oh yeah, the, uh, I really like Dalton. Can you pause and give us a good look at the new cu- pattern on the top of the wings? I yeah. love that little spotting near the body and the the stripes near the tips. That's inspired. I, I like yeah. that so much. It's pretty good, yeah. 
and see if you can pretty. find one with a really pretty head crest as well. Yeah. Because I would love to see. I, I've seen some of them that are that are just downright stunning. Um, fly around here. Flying around. What are you, a pteranodon? <laughs> what are you, some kind of funny guy, Mister Jokes over here? So, uh, James, you said you're it's staying in the same place. Yeah, I, I'm going to keep it an A, but I think I would say maybe a higher A than I said before. Um, sure. Although, honestly, that, that blue design with the white markings on the crest that Dalton just looked at. This one that's asleep? Yeah, like, honestly, for me, that might be an S. That's gorgeous. They're really good. I think yeah. that this is going to bump me up a letter ranking. I think that I'll put this at A tier now. Mm. Um, the, the patterns and colors are absolutely stunning. And I, I do think I like this significantly more than, than the old one. That one in particular is so good. This is, a very this is gorgeous. One. Yeah, I. you know what? It's close to uh, the JP2 Tyrannodon. Yeah. Oh, that's why I like it. I don't know. I also, I, I like things that <laughs> are blue and cr Like this kind of color scheme, it feels very real. It feels like a real animal that could exist easily. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm actually going to revise my earlier statement. I'm sorry to supersede you, Dalton, but I think I'm going to bump that's it up okay. to an S just because lots of this skin, to lots be clear. Of superseding. Yes. Um, I am a little torn. I, I gave it an A last time, you said? You gave it a B. I gave it a B. Oh, I gave it a B. No, this <laughs> is an A. It, it's easily, this easily clears into A. I wasn't sure if I was going to push it up to S yet, because it's still... The teeth and the what we realized about the head shape still kind of, I think, keep it out of S for me. But I'm, I'm absolutely going up to A. Cool. So that makes it that this new recolorable JP3 Pteranodon has bumped up a letter grade from B to A. Wow. Congratulations on your improvement. And now, on to our next friend. Yeah. I shall just go straight over to the land of the Sorum Pods. I love this release animation so much. It's a good release animation. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep moving, moving, moving. Keep them doggies <laughs> moving. Rawhide. Rawhide. Man, it's so pretty, but God, it takes... It takes its, its sweet time. It knows it, it. Listen, I feel tremendous kinship with this dinosaur. It takes a long time to leave the hatchery. We take a long time to record the video. That's a good <laughs> point. Right. Oh, wait, are we going to have to... Have we already split the JP3 and the OG? No. Designs? So this one is going to be... Previously, we ranked the Brachiosaurus by its... Um, original by its JP slash frontier design and we kind of universally didn't really like this one so th previously um, we put um, Brachiosaurus at S tier and the breakdown was that uh, it was everybody but Alex put it in S tier and Alex put it in A and so now we're wonder uh, the question of the day is how does this new model stack up to Brachy uh, to the other Brachiosaurus? Mm -hmm. So um, let me just make sure I understand. This is the Jurassic Park three model, right? But yes. with yes. new skins. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is Notable that? differences being the much thinner and more blade like head crest, the narrower mouth and the thicker, longer tail. Also, I think the position of the nares has changed, right? They're anteriorly directed. Oh, they're, a, they're a little lower, mm. I think. Yeah, I think they're slightly repositioned, but not nearly like to the front. Sure. You know, well, we Amelia, you're supposed to go first, yes. Yeah. The head is wrong, and I don't like it. But it looks fine from a distance, and the colors are pretty. So I could give it... I'll give it a B for Brachiosaurus. I am amazed at how much my distaste for the JP3 Brachiosaurus was actually the color now that I see these new skins. 
like or something about the way the model was textured um i would give this an a i actually really like it uh i don't think it's the iconic design from our youth but it's very pretty and a lot of these new skins really i think improve it quite a bit i don't mm. love the way the head crest looks but and i think namely the, that it's obviously a head crest on this design and not right yeah right right mm. But I mean I like that or, that kind of like russet brown orange skin right there. This one's nice, yeah. I really like that, and that feels I don't know feels kind of reasonable. I like it. I like that it's pretty while also being not incredibly compl complex and intricate. You know what I mean? Like I, I always go on the record that large animals are drab, and they typically are. But I think that it's nice to see like a little bit of patterning and some pops of color, but it generally being a much more kind of diffuse kind of moderate or um, tempered design, I guess. I like it a lot. I, I'm going to say A tier. I'm not going to be as kind with this. I think that I really enjoy the fact that you can recolor this now. And uh, if anything, I could see myself using this as one of them being kind of like what we said in the um, the Brachiosaurus video of one of them being Giraffe Titan, one of them being Brachiosaurus, pairing one of them with uh, Kentrosaurus in a little Tendaguru um, formation exhibit. But I feel like the the nice colors and stuff on this model are putting lipstick on a pig, and <laughs> it still doesn't look great. I still hate the head, and yeah. Um, Still not the biggest fan. I think I would put this at, I think I would put this in B, if not C tier. Probably I'd give it a low B. What if it kicks your car? <laughs> I'd probably put it, I'd probably put it in D tier for that. If a Brachiosaurus <laughs> kicked my car, I, I think. I don't think you'd be there to put it in D tier. I don't think, I, I, I think it would put, be putting me in the ground. In G tier for grave. <laughs> I have... I have B for Brachiosaurus. I, the model's not as nice as the original one. I don't like the crest, but the, it's pretty. I have nothing else to say. Yeah, like James, I'm shocked at how much I think the color has made a difference for me. I think the fact that the head crest in these recolored ones isn't actually like made a display structure in terms of its color helps kind of hide it. Um... And I, I, I have never liked this this weird splotchy green that they gave it in Jurassic Park three. I think that's really ugly. I think this improved. I think this improves the quality of it a lot. Um, but the, ish, the the weirdness of the head um, behind the scenes, because I wasn't in the Brachiosaurus video, I was very torn on whether to give it an S or an A. I honestly think the design's probably A tier, but I could not. The the pull of nostalgia was simply too strong to not put it in S tier, and I stand by that decision. I have no pull of nostalgia for this. Um, so I think I'm 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 gonna put it in B tier. B for Brachiosaurus is a very fair rating. So it's three Bs. Wait, four four Bs? Amelia, did you put in B tier? Yeah. Yes. So four Bs and an A. That makes it B tier. Alrighty. All right. So last one of the new Brachiosaurus. Who this? Goes down in B tier. Nice. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> we have Shai Halud coming. <laughs> praise the praise the maker. I don't know what's happening yes. here. Uh, praise the coming oh, and the going. This, of hap him. this happened in our in our. Oh snap! Oh snap! I think that was um, Wu Herosaurus, right? In our yeah, Wu Herosaurus. Herosaurus. Wu Herosaurus. It's a street shark oh. video. Well, thank you for focusing on the most plain of all of these games. Oh my god! The little green one to the left. This on one? the far left. No, you buffoon. The far left. The left. The left. Hold on. I've gone left. Yeah, what are you, Alex? That are was you dyslexic? Oh, wait, hold on. No, I, my, <laughs> are you side lexic? My stream is very slow. Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> These are pretty. These are gorgeous. Gorgeous. I think they've done a, a tremendous job. Ooh, that one in the back chasing the car. Like the one, the third one back. I like his yeah. stripes. These are cool. This is such a wonderful design. Um, the stripes going down the tail being colored in like 
I mean, every- oh, hold, on, hold on. Do the little spikies have color? A little They've bit. Got, um, uh, it didn't help any day. Yeah, the bases way. look kind of like they have their own color, and then the tips get colored too. Yeah, let me see if that varies or if it's always that. Oh, that's a nice uh, stegosaurus. Oh, that's cute. It looks like a porcupine. Yeah. It does, yeah. Oh my gosh, good point. Ooh, look at that blue Four one. Four good points, actually. Um, <laughs> so I, I guess oh, I sorry, really Scott. like that. Like this is like this is the first time I've actually ever seen a stegosaurus design that makes the tail a display structure as well, not just the plates. I really, really like that with like the Ooh, a- addition of bright color going down the tail. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous idea. I love this one here. Ooh. Whatever this one I'm Ooh, looking at right now. That a pretty one too. This is the first stegosaurus I've ever thought looks better than green with red plates. <laughs> Yeah, it, it reminds great. me almost, I mean, I don't God. know why I'm getting this, but it reminds me of like one of those little bamboo sharks. It, it, yeah. yeah. I, I love this kind of color scheme. It's got um, a color scheme that I think I've seen, like, you know what it looks like? Like, did, did anyone have like the, the gray and blue, I think the like Jurassic World T-Rex, Dr- I'm sorry, Lost World T-Rex toy? Yep. It's got mm. that, it's got that color. Mm. Actually, Ooh, no. Dalton, I never had the that back one. There, I had the um, I had the chaos effect variant. That so one mine right? was no, no, no. Orange, black, and blue. That one. Okay. But it was the one with the, the slit thing. in the belly, oh, so you can put goodness. things down the mouth and pull them out oh, of the wait. stomach. Oh no, that is the one I'm thinking about. I had that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you had the one with the movie colors, kind of. Mine was bright, like toxic orange and oh, blue yeah, and black, because they did a line called chaos effect. One nice. day, viewers, if you comment on this video, maybe I'll show you my shame, <laughs> which is my gigantic collection of Jurassic Park toys in my mother's basement. Oh, um, yeah, I, I can dig that. I've got some in an attic somewhere. Yeah, um, and by shame, I mean tremendous pride. Um, they kick ass, they're cool. My parents saved, saved. My parents purchased many of these in one large collection <laughs> on eBay for me when I was 11. Oh. Um, and it cost them several hundred dollars, for which the retribution was, you do not get allowance again for years. <laughs> and I think I got an allowance again when I was 17. But hey, <laughs> you don't use them because you, cool cool, like, well, you were going to spend that allowance on cool Jurassic Park stuff. So. Well, yeah, I mean, it was great. And it was, I, I mean, I think I have a representative of almost every toy that they made for the original lines from Kenner. Um, cool. For both movies. That's probably was, worth more than $100. No, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they're not in box or anything. Like, they're used. They were played with very heavily. But yeah, they no, I mean, nowadays, they're probably worth quite a bit. I'm not getting rid of them, though. No, so, for some context that. on these critters, so we previously ranked just the JP2 skin for the Stego mm-hmm. because of how much we dislike the Jurassic World one. Dalton, you want to breed one breed just so we can Jurassic- get a little bit yeah. of a comparison uh, for this, this while I'm feels saying like what we got carry. previously? Um, so we, we rank just the JP2 skin because of how much we dislike the Jurassic World version. And um, Amelia gave it a B, um, and so did I. And then James, Alex, and Dalton all gave it A. And I remember a. one of my specific critiques was mm-hmm. that I thought that the skins on the Jurassic World one were nice and pretty, but I hated everything else about it, and I wish that I could recolor the JP2 one. And m- my wish has been granted. That it has. Mm-hmm. So do we want to start by potentially revising our ranking of the dud? Of the world? Well, of the, yeah, the, let, of let's take a look at one. it again. Yeah, let's get that. Let, let's because get him up there on the stand. Put him on the right, stand. Well, this one's going to swim. <laughs> Bless the maker. <laughs> I'm speed um, Praise the why? coming and the going of him. Uh, why He's does trying to be a shark. always do that? He's trying to be a shark. He's got yeah, the little plates. Things, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't like that this one looks like it's been microwaved. It's <laughs> it's lumpy. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to give this a C because it looks crispy and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I hate this. Not D tier hate it. But it's too crispy. Um, it, it's covered in panko and it yeah, was left well, in the oil for too long and Gross. the plates on this one look like nacho Doritos blistered <laughs> this is it's, the uh, 
This is the it's, species left after Mount Sibo erupted, right? That's the canon. <laughs> yeah, they got them out of the volcanic ash. Um, the only thing I like about this, actually, is I like the plate, the plate designs, I think. but And I don't think they're the same as the new variant. Um, uh, like, I don't think the designs on the plates are the same as in the 97 skin. They're and not. I kind of prefer no. these. This is a long way of saying C tier. It would be D if the plates were also boring. Um, I am going to say that I think that the new skins on the 97 model bump this thing so far up into putting it in S tier for me. I love the new skins so incredibly much. Um, and I think that because we didn't rank this guy previously, I think that th this is also C tier. I... I very much despise this, and I look forward to not using it in my park anymore. Especially, it doesn't have a beak. It looks so bad. <laughs> but oh, consider. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, that's Gross. disgusting. I'm, can I revise the D? That's so bad. I didn't Certainly, know that. It, we weren't zoomed in. <laughs> you can. Quickly, uh, Jurassic World is C. This one is a high. You know, well, I was just... thinking like, oh, you know, it's the the real Stegosaurus has a long neck, and that's what's keeping it out of S. But I don't really think that. I'm lying to myself. It's the new one's an S. The new one's fantastic. Um, for me, yeah, ranking the Jurassic World Stegosaurus, it's a C. I, I have nothing new to add to that conversation. It's a C. Now let's talk about something good. Yes. Does this change any... So currently, Scott, we have the Lost World Stegosaurus in A? A tier. A tier? Okay. You've moved it to S for you. I have. Alex has moved it to S. Amelia, where do I'm you find? I'm also putting it in S for Stegosaurus. That's a good point. Its its name does start with that letter, yes. I, I forgot to consider that. I am also making it S for Stegosaurus. I, S for Stegosaurus. I really like it. Yeah, it makes me happy. I love mm -hmm. the Stegosaurus design from The Lost World. Like, just, it, it's the first time I ever saw it in media where it, I felt like it looked like a real animal. I know that that's not really what Stegosaurus looked like, but it's still kind of in my head what it looked like. In the same way that when I envision a living T-Rex, despite being a person who studies Tyrannosaurus and knowing it didn't look just like the Jurassic Park one, if I envision a living T-Rex in my head, if you told me think about T-Rex when it was alive, I think of the Jurassic Park T-Rex. It's deep in the brain. Um, and it swims in my brain water. So, yes. I don't like how you phrase that. Eh, it's okay. Again, I'll get worse as the night goes on. I'm tired. Let's sick. go. Absolutely. Well, yeah. So, with that, yeah, wait, that Dawn, did you? Oh. Oh, yes. I, I said it. I'll, I'll repeat it just for the sake of clarity. This is S for me as well. S for okay. Stegosaurus. I just Nothing couldn't remember have. if you had. I'm sorry. Yeah. No so, worries. with that, that takes the Jurassic World Stego and slams it down into C tier and the Jurassic Park stego and pops it up into S tier. We've split the atom. We have indeed. But now, Oppie, let's get to something done? a little newer. Yes. A little newer. Uh, Ooh. As we now for tonight's to... feature presentation. As we take the monorail back to New Land. Um, I will say as a clarifying point for those who may be wondering, yes, there are a couple of new other new reskins of, of variant models that have been released in this pack, notably Allosaurus and Dimorphodon. And I'm not forgetting any. I don't think so. Um, we will get to those when we just do the videos on Allosaurus and Dimorphodon. So we yes. have not forgotten about them, but we figured it makes no sense to rank something if we haven't already ranked the base variant. So don't you worry, especially because we have that we forgot that we didn't. Yeah, we have some different things to say about some of the other different models, which is which will be fun. Yes. But now it's so a new time. It's new time. And who would we like to begin with in this suite of Cretaceous Predators from the Cretaceous Predator pack? Should we go in maybe or geological order or phylogenetic order or alphabetical order? I don't care. Choose an order. Yeah. All right, we're doing them. All right, I'm, I'm, we're starting because also the first one in phylogenetic order is the one I want to talk about the most. So we're beginning with Concavenator. Sorry, 
I, I resuming in. My stream is still slow. I don't know why yours is lag. That's unfortunate. But yes, we're starting with Concavenator. Concavenator. Or is it Concavenator? I've always I said Concavenator, except for that one time I just didn't. But I'm, I said it in a way I've never said that word before. Unfortunately, Concavenator. Unfortunately, the, na the name origin doesn't give a huge amount of pronunciation help. That's okay. Let's release some and see what they look like. It's from Espana. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh that I like this little scream. The sound was I great. Didn't get oh, man. I just want to see the live stream. Let me. It sounds like Catch a scream. You know those screaming goats that were an internet phenomenon <laughs> in like 2008? Yes. That's what it sounds like. I Are those like. That's not the sound they make? Like that's a, a Yeah, that's hole. not. Well, that's whatever. That's what this sounds like. It kind of does. I don't care if it's not what a goat sounds like. Okay. Well, this is exciting. I still can't see it, but I'm going to pretend like I'm seeing it. There we go. I finally caught up. My God, that's so cool. All right. Let's talk about Concavenator or Concavenator which I'll probably use interchangeably to frustrate people uh, and myself. Comment us your favorite pronunciation that Alex uses in the video. <laughs> on, on, the, on the topic of pronunciation, yeah. I think we should start out by saying that conca uh, concavenator, corcovatus, means the hunter from the province of Cuenca with a hump. Huh. You know... I always thought it was concavenator because the top of the spine was concave between Con the humps. That's what I thought, Me too. too. Yep. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh no, it's from a place called Cuenca. And I'm like, that isn't even how I've heard anybody pronounce this animal's name. It's also not how it's spelled. Well, so, I, I think it might I be Latinized. I, it, it, it might be Latinized. Be, yeah. So Is it might be Cuencavenator? I was going to say, Quenca. it might also be a pun. I, I think it's a pun. I think this is like a Broshukas level pun with a taxon name. Wow. I like that's incredible. I that's like very that a lot. funny. Um and Corcovatus means with a hump, I assume. Yes. Right. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. They're they fighting. Hop. Look at that scream. I like how the other one gets yelled at and just does the oh, reptile and, thing oh, of just staring. Tail. But then he bites his tail. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh anyway, what a great it, social animation. Gorgeous. This is the the animal we just discussed. Um, oh, he sit. Sorry, I got. He excited has a good about sit, it. like Carnotaurus, almost. Yeah. yeah, he's got a theropod sit. And anyway, so yes, this is a theropod. Everything we're going to talk about from this point on are theropods, bipedal meat-eating dinosaurs that include the birds. Cool. Um, this guy is neat uh, in that it is. Another Allosaur, uh, I think it's the sixth Allosauroid in the game at this point, um, excluding whatever Mega Allosaurs are, so don't worry about that. What are you counting as an Allosaur, actually, Alex? Allosauroids, so like Carnos, like basically synonymous with Carnosaurus, so Giganotosaurus, Cocaridonosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus, this, Allosaurus, and Metriacanthosaurus. Okay, I was wondering if you were including um, Mega Raptorins in there, because no, of suggestion. I don't. <laughs> right, well, Because yeah, I don't they... think that's where they go. I, I, I don't either, but Mega, or Mega Raptorins were historically within that group, although now a lot of yes. evidence is showing that they're somewhere else. But we'll talk about that when a paper is published, I'm sure. Now, this, this beautiful little dude, this neat little guy, uh, and it is, I think, probably also the smallest Allosauroid in the game at this point. Um, oh, definitely. Because he is small. Uh, I think maybe <laughs> six, or six, might be. six, seven meters long in life. But um, anyway, yes, so... Oh, it froze, but I can keep talking. This guy is right outside of Carcharodontus. It's, it's a Carcharodontosaur, but it is not within the family. Uh, it is a very early member of the group. Uh, so things like Acrocanthosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Giganotosaurus are all more closely related to each other uh, than they are to Carcharodontosaurus. But Carcharodontosaurus is more closely related to them uh, than it is to something like Allosaurus or Metriacanthosaurus, which are also in the game. Um, now, I don't want to get too carried away, but this is a great model, and it's got so many cool things on it. Um, obviously, the, the, the insane hump. And I think, Dalton, you were looking at some reconstructions of the hump uh, that had interesting implications that I don't really completely remember. I just want to say that, golly gee, it sure is weird. Um, there's, I think, a Spinosaur with something similar. Ichthyovenator has been 
Well, it's it, Ichthyovenator is the opposite of this in that okay. this guy mostly doesn't have a hump and then has a, like a big spiky hump. Uh, Ichthyovenator so has yes, yes. So that's what happened is they you fit them together and they disappear like Tetris. Excellent. <laughs> they, they go, okay. Um, it does sound like the fossil record of these animals. It's particularly or, spinosaurus. Well, or it goes ba ba ba, and a little Korok seed comes out. Just. Uh, <laughs> I mean, speaking of a fossil record, and you know what, we, we can come back to Las Hoyas in a second. But like, this thing is gorgeous. It's probably it's probably one of the most complete uh, Carcharodontosaur skeletons we have. It is. Oh, it's damn near the whole thing. Like yeah. head to tail, with I think most of almost the entire arm and an entire hind limb, with maybe just a few chunks missing. It is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's one of the most insane fossils I've ever seen, um, and, um, and it's fully articulated with some fun things that. In the yes. notes on the specimen, they phrased as preventing further preparation. Which yeah. we'll get to in a second, but first I, I just kind of want to... So hump function, what does it do? Mm-hmm. Does anyone know or know what the hypotheses are about the function of yes. the hump? So there's, I mean, the classic answer is it's a display structure. Oh, and yes. That's what I think it probably is, is it? a weird yeah. display structure. But... Something I never noticed about Concomitator really until this model came out, because I haven't looked at a ton of paleo art of it, is I remember the original art for it had the very obvious kind of hump over the hip, and I didn't really notice this kind of secondary hump um, on like the base of the tail. It, the, that art shows it kind of um, grading more into the tail a little bit, and uh, I think that is in part informed by one of the hypotheses that I believe at least one of the authors of the paper has at least advocated for up until I think 2018 which is where I saw a comment left by the author. Um, I don't know if they still hold to this idea but at least at least someone who's worked on this fossil has suggested that and, and this has been brought up before with other uh, sailed and crested and humped dinosaurs um, kind of like camel like humps which we often don't think of um, their conception is that there is some kind of potential like fatty body like a camel's hump that lies in between these two sections of vertebrae and would maybe smooth out that surface um, and potentially could serve a number of functions and they propose potentially a thermoregulatory function. I don't know that I abide by that, frankly, but I do I do feel obliged to report it. Um, cool. I think it's probably a display feature. But. Um, see, I've always, w- whenever I see the depictions of concavenator with or like a skeletal or something like that and it shows that kind of double hump my immediate first thought is wow that looks like pathology like it looks like it's almost one kind of like angular kind of wedge shaped yeah. mm-hmm. like hip sail that got bit early in development or got broken early in development and developed a weird kind of bump to it because it just it, it looks so odd to me it, but if it, that were the case, wouldn't it be nubby? Like, even if it was early on, like, the bone would still get weird. Yeah, no, it's, if it's a pathology, I, it would have to be a developmental thing where it just didn't develop right. But given that it's part of the spine, I think it would have been more severe and just, like, killed it as an embryo. It, it, it also, those neural spines, so in theropods mostly, like, the ilia often in many theropod groups wind up converging on the midline. And they kind of like roof. The, it, so in tyrannosaurs, actually, and we'll talk about a tyrannosaur soon. Um, they actually wind up completely like roofing the the spine. Like the um, the spinal erector muscle would have had to go through a tunnel formed by the hip bones. It's a very odd arrangement. I don't think that it would be likely for the um, neural spines of the sacral vertebrae to be coming up like past the ilia. And in any case, though, the region, I think, would actually be very difficult to study because of the way this is preserved. So it's possible that the bone is gnarly, and we don't know. I, but uh, but I, 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 I'm sorry, Dalton, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, to that point, I also believe I've seen comments from one of the authors. Um, because I saw someone reconstruct the sale in that way, Scott, where they reconstructed it as one piece, and they're like, I think this is just broken. And uh, this, is, this is where I, I think I also heard about the fat hypothesis. Um, is the author was responding to this art and was saying like, Hey, like I understand why you think that it's, it might be just broken, but having seen the tips of the vertebrae, they seem to be like decently well formed. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to be pathologic or like taphonomically broken. It seems that this is the shape. Um, yes. You know, I, sometimes 
Oh. Was that? Was that oh. A, oh, hello. <laughs> the, the cat has appeared in the opinion. audio. Hey, James, do you know? You know, sometimes the people that work on these specimens uh, know things about them. Isn't it crazy? That is crazy. No, I wanted I, to say one other thing. Yeah. <laughs> which is that I'm checking another Carcharodontosaur, who I think bears some weight in this question. And mm -hmm. uh, the sacral neural spines do protrude above the level of the ilium in that taxon. So mm -hmm. I think it, my knowledge is more Solorosaur based, where that is less common. I apologize for maybe being misinforming in there. And I want to correct what I said. It is possible that this animal would have had neural spines on those verts going above the ilium. Mm -hmm. So... And that's that. I would also say to, to your point, Alex, that my biggest reason to not just go like, hey, I think this might be pathologic is because I haven't heard the author say we think this is pathologic and I want to trust them on this. Oh, that's not. Yeah, that, that wasn't a dig at you, Scott. All right. So we talked about the hump. There's just a little a few other things. So the model is great. It's beautiful. Um, it gets so many. It's got all these great little details. It gets right. It gets the, the these kind of pre-orbital crests that are coming off the rostrum. Uh, the hands are fantastic. The claws and like the ma the proportion of the manis is also correct. It's got that. You see that like middle claw is like meaty. Mm -hmm. Look at that middle. Oh, look look how meaty it is. Big um, meaty claws. But what's kind of the most exciting? Well, not the most because the the hump is bizarre. But what's also very exciting about. Uh, Concavenator and uh, is some of its integument, uh, some of which is kind of reflected here. And I would just like to, to be on the record as saying, I don't think it's a coincidence that when we have, you know, exceptional preservation, um, like the kind that is from uh, Atlas Hoyas, where, where the specimen is from in Spain, uh, we get, you know, an allosaurid, which are often considered generic quote unquote, uh, with like bizarre features. And I, you know, I, I think most dinosaurs in life had bizarre features. Uh, maybe not a huge hump, but things that we'd be like, wow, that's crazy. That's so cool. Um, just very quickly, the, the incredible preservation at Las Hoyas has allowed for the observation of a lot of scales on these guys. And this includes uh, foot pads. Uh, it includes small uh, scales on the foot, much very bird-like, which is a nice a point of evidence where we can we can look at a dinosaur and be like, you know, they do have these these bird-like scales or scalation on the foot. Um, but also, fascinatingly, oh belly scales, which you can see because oh, yep. you just zoomed in. They have snake-like belly scales along the bottom of their body, which is a very, you know, it's very reptile-y. And we often are thinking, you know, we often think of these as, you know, stem birds, and that's correct. They have avian features. But they're also, thing, once you're down in Allosaurus, there's still a lot of reptilian vibes going on like that uh and those are preserved on the specimen uh now they do also give it quills which i think is pretty neat um, can i can i say something real fast on this on the scales um it's just to give you an idea of the level of preservation in this specimen that it is said in the paper uh for this that the uh, on the underside of the tail there are impressions of and this just gives you an insane amount of like a, a look into how much incredible detail is preserved in this fossil is impressions of three nearly quadrangular scales in association with each vertebra. Like that is the level of precision that we're able to get on this. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Um, but yes, so the quills very quickly, because I don't I don't want to go over too long. So this model is reconstructed as having quills on the back of its arm. Um, and this is a teensy weensy bit controversial um, in that the, the kind of, so this is, this is based on the presence of these divots in the ulna, of uh, ulnar quill knobs, uh, which would be the attachment point for flight feathers in birds, as well as some near dinosaur birds like, oh, I'm sorry, near bird dinosaurs like Oviraptor and Dromaeosaurus. Now, this is well outside of that area. <laughs> um, and whether, you know, ornithomimosaurs have true flight feathers on their forearms is a little controversial, so the presence of quill knob attachments on a allosauroid is a little... It's just, it's interesting. Um, there have been, there's been a proposal that these are, in fact, muscle attachment points, and I can't say for certain uh, 
where the state of the debate is currently, I think it would be strange for them to have, you know, flight feathers. And they don't give them flight feathers here. They're, they're kind of quill-like structures and also on the back of the head. But I think it is worth saying that it is likely that concaven- uh, concavenator, concavenator, however you want to say it, probably had some kind of feathery integument, uh, even though we preserve it with scales. And, you know, that's, that's because, for, for one, we have early theropods like uh, Ceramimus, which are feathered. Um, and we suspect that feathers are, are primitive to dinosaurs. But also there's a dinosaur from Las Hoyas called Pelicanomimus, which when first discovered, uh, it's the front half of an ornithomimosaur, a very early ornithomimosaur that is preserved with beautiful scales on its body and like skin texture, uh, but no feathers. But it's an ornithomimosaur. And we know that other ornithomimosaurs were very feathery. So I think what's like what's likely happening is that the, the kind of preservation in this deposit uh, prefers scales. That's what's preserved, the impressions and the molds, uh, and not the, uh, not the feathers. Although I think there's been a little evidence more recently of some feather-like structures in, in Pelicanomimus. So that's my piece on it. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to add... Please. Is that I think some of the debate over these being quill knobs, which has been contentious, right? Yes. Is that there the ulna, and this is all pulling from uh, information that's available publicly, because I think it's also worth noting um, this specimen is beautiful, and a full monographic description of it is forthcoming, uh, and yeah, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. think when that happens, this will probably become the default reference point for like an allosaurus anatomy. Mm. It's just you know it's an amazing, amazing specimen. Um, the debate over these being quill knobs has really focused on where they are on the ulna because they were initially interpreted as being on the anterior side of the ulna, which would not make sense because generally like the quill knobs are along here where the feathers are attaching, not like here. Well, this is the radius, but they'd be like between the radius projecting and the ulna. inside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It seems Strange. to be that the ulna is distorted in a way where it's actually like masking the true orientation and the current, mm-hmm. I think weight of argument is in favor of these being ulnar quill knobs. So very cool. That's cool because they um, should be down there, right? And the integument at this stage in theropod evolution is bound to be very strange. Yeah. Oh, look at him scratch. That's so. That's so cool. Oh, 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 oh! We the see fight, the thing. The hiss. <laughs> he does not I, care. I like that the <laughs> other one just does that again very kind of reptilian behavior of getting yelled at and just like looking away just <laughs> um, I really so any... like yeah oops sorry go ahead I just really like how reptilian and yet like pro avian this feels like it, yeah. it, it's a really really good design to illustrate where it goes phylogenetically like you're getting mm-hmm. bird type traits but it still feels like a reptile and not like, yes, I know birds are reptiles for any phylogenum pedant who might be in the call right now. But you know what I mean. It's, aesthetically, it feels like something we would not hesitate to call a reptile while also having avian characters, mm-hmm. which I think is an interesting uh, design choice. Although I do think that they could have gone a like feathered route with it, but I don't think that this is bad. No, I'm very happy with this. I'm exceptionally happy with it. Well, um, let's let's quantify how happy we are with it. Wait, I just want it. to bring something up. There's a glaring inaccuracy. <gasps> oh, I know. The hump is supposed to be over the torso, not over the hips. The gap between the two humps is yeah, over the be. pelvis. Is it really? I yep. thought it was supposed to be more towards the tail. No. Nope. Oh my goodness! I was so excited about everything else, I didn't even notice. Look at the fossil. It's like the last couple dorsal vertebrae have the sail. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be. Yeah, because well, the sacrum is think, what's contributing to the gap. Right. I think I've identified the problem, which is that almost all drawings of it get it wrong. Right. Except for one. There's one, like one that I've just Googling cock of editor. I see a bunch of them that have smoothed it out. And like literally, okay, two, I've, seen, I've found two so far that have gotten it right. Huh. Well, I'll be. I think intuitively we so want it to be over the pelvis because that yeah. makes sense to us. Can I? I mean, it's almost. It's it's not even. It's it's really like two vertebrae off. Hey, you know, you know who else gets it right? Papa. Who? 
Purple. Purple gets it right. I'm gonna send the thing to the group <laughs> oh, chat because yeah. it's so ugly in all the other ways, but it gets that right. That's so funny. Yeah. The uh, the other thing upsetting. that I think is interesting is that there's another Carcarodontosaur that has a similar setup, but it's much Pardon more me. subtle. And oh, which one? And actually, we don't know the some of the parts of the skeleton that might be informative about this. Um, Maraxes. Mm, oh really? yeah. Maraxes has a weird saddle shaped mm-hmm. depression over the pelvis. And we don't have the immediately preceding dorsal vertebrae. I think it's possible that Maraxes would have had a structure like this. Unless there's cool. more material that I don't know of. Um, I don't I think don't there's any the reason. My head. I mean, it's possible that they're going back to the quarry and that they're going to find more. Like, I, I don't know. Um, but based on what was initially described, there was the neural spine that was interpreted as being one of the more posterior dorsals, but not the posterior two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how confident that identification is. I assume... I assume it's confident. It's a, it's a really good team of authors. Um, and I don't think there's any reason to say I think Maraxes had this kind of arrangement, but it's interesting this weird saddle-like depression over the pelvis is popping up in another Carcharodontosaur. Yeah. Saddle-like depression is also the, the alternate Country title song. I have for my sad cowboy music playlist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, let's, you want to rank it now as opposed to at the end? Yeah, let's rank it yeah, now. I think we do it as we go through. That's what we okay, do. Let's go as. Right? Yeah, I will start because I this I was talking about it a lot, and I have, have exhausted all I have to say, so I can be brief. Um, and in brief, S. This is so good. This is one of my favorite theropods in the game. Even even with the slight displacement, it's got so much personality, and it's beautiful. And I love him, her, everyone. I love it. it I love I love everyone involved. I also think that this is like, I don't know. I love it. I don't. I don't care so much that the the, the hump is wrong because that's clearly something that's been perpetuated um, among paleo artists, and I'm sure that they were referencing other drawings. Um, I really like this color in particular. It just looks great. And you know what? It makes me think this would have been a very good alternative to Indoraptor. It has all the same <laughs> vibe. <laughs> It's just better. And like, it's a weird enough animal that the public doesn't really know about that I think it would have had the same impact of, wait, what the hell is that? It's It's like kind of lanky and weird enough, you know? Like, they could have made it work, especially like this design. They gave it the quills and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same movie. You're right, Alex. It is. A vastly uglier version of it. Yeah. I don't remember it. It's it's a model. It's it's a model. In the mansion. Yeah, I, I know the scene. I just don't remember all the models. Um, yeah, that's yeah. fair. I had forgotten about it, too. No, yeah, no, S, obviously. Um, yeah, I want to just emphasize, I didn't bring up the hump placement thing to say that I thought it should be ranked low because of it. I just noticed it and felt it was worth saying. S tier. This is a beautiful model. Um, I love it aesthetically. I love the way it, ba- it like kind of communicates the phylogenetic position through the visual language of the model. It's such a cool, weird animal. And they did a good job of making it look natural to the degree that they could. Um, S tier, it just, it, it's great. I feel like if this model was to show up in prehistoric kingdom, I would not be incredibly surprised if it were not changed that much. Like, it's it's just such a good model in terms of all the detailing that went into it. It almost doesn't feel like it belongs in this game. Like, it's just... Not that mm-hmm. not that the other models in this game are all bad, but it has a different kind of design language, is what I'm getting yeah. at. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't right. feel like it's a Jurassic Park design at all. I don't, it just feels like the real animal to me. It looks... I, I don't know. I'm looking at Ugh, it good and like, Lord, that I kill the, animation like, is like the gap violent. is off, but I think like the position of what would the, like the, that first tall neural spine, I think is like when the leg is straight down, it looks like it's at least it's a little anterior to it because the, the, the real, it's really just two neural spines that are very tall. I think they've, what they've done is filled in the back of the gap. Um, I still think the peak is a little bit... It, it's more over the hips than it um, should be, but I... Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it kind of leveled back out. I can see that. Yeah, but... Uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's a very minor detail, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also... I, I really like the little detail of... If you watch it walk from behind, the way that the the fin 
kind of pops from side to side with how the pelvis shifts with the shifting weight of the animal is so naturalistic. Like they, they got how it moves, which I find just so, so fascinating. But I Scott, would say, yeah. Scott rubbernecking allosauroids confirmed. Absolutely. hundred percent. I mean, I hate to see it leave, That's but cool. I love to watch it walk away. <laughs> I kept um, trying to find one to show an example of it. And everyone wait. I looked at either stopped moving or sat down. I, that was very funny. But Scott, you butchered that line so much. I did. I, I hate did. to I see it leave, but I love to watch it walk <laughs> away. <laughs> what the fuck ever. <laughs> I've never said that before. You it... so much your camera shifted. <laughs> Oh god, I think the line is I hate to see you go, but I love to watch love you to leave. Watch, watch you leave, yeah. Right. Um regardless, okay, so I'll give my delivery of that line a D tier. But uh I'm gonna break with the rest of my crew here, and I think that this deserves H tier. I think that this is a damn near perfect reconstruction of this critter. Um, every single skin I see of it is gorgeous. Like, sure, I have preferences for some of them, but I think it's stunning. And I, I could not have asked for a better reconstruction of Concavenator, I guess, unless I wanted to nitpick and move the, the, those two vertebrae, like two vertebrae forward. But I think that this thing is perfect and I'm putting it in H tier. Okay. I, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Scott, because that's exactly what I'm going to do as well. I think this might be until perhaps to be eclipsed later in this video. I don't know. I haven't evaluated it yet. Um, this may be the best theropod in the game. Yeah. Um, this is un unbelievably good. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think they did such a good job. I think um, we haven't brought it up too much, and I think some people are having some tef technical difficulties. The sound design for this is really, really good. It's making incredible noises. All its animations are really neat. Its social animation is great. Sometimes it just kind of kicks the ground and smells it. Um, this is an H tier for me. I, I, I don't think there are ter terribly many designs in this game that are better. This is outstanding. Yeah. I mean, definitely high S for me. I have but a that, question. Did yes. we, where did we put you Tyrannus? Uh, we put you Tyrannus in S tier. Okay. I maintain that H tier is saved for little guys. That's and little and guys and Shonosaurus and Archelon. I was. It's too so for me. It's an energy thing. Like I don't trust this man. Therefore, he does not belong in H tier. Like <laughs> he's tricky. That's, it's it's a vi H is a vibes thing for me. I am not disagreeing with the fact that it is very very good. And if it weren't for like vibes, I would have also put it in H. But unfortunately, this man will steal your wallet. Yes. Yeah. That does not belong in H. <laughs> no, you can't leave your homalocephalus with him. Can we, they will go away. Do we have a homalocephaly no, to give? Please. To offer? <laughs> Dalton, could we please offer the perfect man a homalocephaly? <laughs> That's the H I will give the, him. The concavenator <laughs> can have a little homalocephaly as a trait. Um, um, I also, I, I, do, I do just want to say really quickly while we're breeding a lamb for the slaughter um, <laughs> that did you guys also notice that that little kind of like fold of skin? At the yes, front I was about the, to bring that oh up. Oh my God. And it's they animate it correctly. Yeah. No, it's like a lot of the models in this game have weird clipping issues with the limbs. Like it, it's so much detail. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, the, yeah. Of that little flag. Like, yeah. And I mean, like, I don't know where that, like, I guess they call it a patagium. I don't know where that fold would have been in life necessarily. I usually see it shown a little further down. But, like, that's the kind of structure that would have had to be there to join the leg to the body. It didn't have action figure legs where the legs were just tacked onto the side. It's beautiful. Um, we, we wept, we cried. Well, you're about to. Yeah. Because there's a bunch so we, of famalocephaly in oh, here. I'll them to hunt. I have it. I have speed turned up. Oh, um, oh, here oh, we no. go. Mm, what you say? Oh, oh no, not in the forest. Not in the forest. Run. Oh, no. Oh, oh. It just kind of, yeah. no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it, didn't. Oh. it just kind of grabs it and tears. It's nothing. Uh, it's nothing special. It, it wasn't. It wasn't outstanding. I do have so. to say that it is cool that we're, we're getting some demonstration in, in this uh, section as well of one of the new features of this um, update, which is the the group hunts 
mm-hmm. thing where medium sized predators that don't have a pack hunting feature can all start chasing the same animal and like only one of it will do the kill animation but the other ones will kind of like stop short and snarl at it and stuff like they were competing to get it that's a really good little feature yeah 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 um i also want to make a point that just occurred to me uh alex mentioned that this is from the las hoyas formation i just want a blanket statement all of the exhibits that we're showing off today None of them were designed with the purpose of trying to represent any semblance of a naturalistic environment <laughs> of the of the depositional environment. I chose this map because I thought it looked nice, and I put them in here more as treat this more as a zoo and less as an exhibit, um, because these are not attempting to recreate the environments in which any of these animals were found. But, I did make the Tartosaurus one a little sandier, but but is the Las Hoyas a braid? <laughs> <laughs> I think I it's actually, actually a lake. I think it's I, something yeah, it's, or a lake or a lagoon. I don't know. Um, I think a lake it, that, it, it's oh, lacustrine limestone. Yeah, it's a lake that some of the best new animals I've ever heard about are from. Uh, we saw a talk on Al- Albin or Albin Erpidontids. Albin Erpidontids, which are some of the weirdest things ever. We won't. We, don't, we can't talk about those now. Yeah. So yeah. phylogenetically, where do we go next? Uh, That's we, fine. I'll well, probably, uh, my Scott, will probably did you here. do the ranking? Oh, that's. You're correct. Um, so let me go back to the conchas. With that, concavenator ends up right at the tippy top of S tier. Wow. I'll put him up there with Sukumimus. Mm. Oh yeah, another very good theropod. Mm-hmm. Phylogenetically, what's next? Well, we're gonna hop, skip, and jump a little bit closer to birds, but not too much, into Solurosaurs, uh, and then oh. right on up Tyrannosaurs oh. to our seventh oh. in-game Tyrannosaur. Uh, How many is right too many? To... I know you want more, James. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay with the number that are here. I, I would like one more, which is Guanlong, but we're not here to talk about Guanlong. No. There's a few more I'd actually like, but anyway, right now what we got <laughs> is the one I didn't want, which is Tarbosaurus. <laughs> And here it comes. Do we have a big, like, brass instrument we can play as it comes out? If it's coming out, I can't see because uh, it's I'm, just, I'm, I'm sad. We didn't get the cool camera angle. There's, there's a fun new camera angle for the release of this that's like a security camera up on the hatchery, which oh, is so fun. Do you want me to try it again? Yeah, why don't now, we try again? I, I also, apparently it does a cool clicking noise when it comes out, I saw on Twitter. Yeah, apparently that is something the... that it does in the show. Huh. Right. I didn't notice that this particular time, but I'll breed another, I'll breed another pair. Well, it's actually, we'll I think the like. point where it starts clicking is exactly when Alex started speaking, which was That's very right. funny. Mm-hmm. It's I not said, that he had any way of knowing. He doesn't no, hear it. I stuff. can't hear it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's right at the beginning. Okay. Should try Does it again. echolocate? All right, shh. Be very, very right there. Ah, uh, we did get the cool camera angle. We did, and we got the good this clicking. This is fun. I do like this camera. That's cool. Ooh. Ooh. He's there. That's neat. Here comes the guys. Here comes, Here comes the, the boys. Here comes the design. <laughs> it, it certainly is a design. It is. Someone uh, someone worked on this. Someone tried. I like the oh. sounds a lot. It's got good sounds. Brave. Brave. What's that, Amelia? It's fine. I don't care <laughs> that it's spiky. That's such it's an unusual opinion for you to have. <laughs> I know, but like... Having this isn't seen, a documentary. <laughs> having seen the amount of hatred on Twitter over this thing, I think it's obscene and it's not that bad. And it's from a children's cartoon. Which is very bad, but yes. But check out this weird glitch that's happening with the foot. I don't blame the design for this at all. It's just like, oh, huh. all right. <laughs> look at his face on that angle. I do like his yeah, face. His face reminds me of a cat. I was going to say, that reminds me of like when my cat gets in a mood and he's like bapping Did at me and I turn to yell at him. Thin? And like, they made it, it. Its teeth are really thin, and I hate its skull. So yeah, Tarbosaurus. Um, I also 
spoiler, I, I don't mind the design. I think I, I echo Amelia on this. I don't like... I really don't like any of the Camp Cretaceous designs because speaking of design language differences, like this is clearly designed for a cartoon. It's like, it's how I feel about the Nothosaurus. I hate, hate, hate the Scorpius Rex. We haven't gotten there yet and I hope we never do. Um, <laughs> I, I will take it off the wheel if I can. Um, with that stated, I think if you are making a cartoon and you want something to be visually distinguishable from T-Rex, I don't think that this is a terrible way to go about it. But I think that in the game with other things that are designed differently, it does stand out in a way that I don't love. I do really like the sound design, though. Um, now, you may ask, why is the main purpose of this design to distinguish it from T-Rex? Well. This is the closest relative of T-Rex. Um, in fact, some you mean, people maybe think... Maybe it's another species? <laughs> <laughs> some people think that this uh, should be within the same genus of, as T-Rex, so it should be Tyrannosaurus batar um, instead of Tyrannosaurus rex, because the species name of this animal is batar. Um, what does that mean? What does Tarbosaurus Batar mean? Uh, Tarbosaurus means alarming lizard, which I like a lot. And oh yeah, I, I am very alarmed right now. Um, and Batar means hero in Mongolian. I'm quite alarmed here. I'm heroically alarmed. It's an impact tremors. So, um, I don't think there's any reason to make this Tyrannosaurus Batar. Um, however, it is recovered frequently as the closest relative of T-Rex. Although, um, curiously, not always. Um, there is oh. at least one analysis where uh, this and another Asian Tyrannosaur called Shu Cheng Tyrannus come Jesus. up as each other's closest relatives, and that group is the sister to T-Rex. But under that yeah. phylogeny, you would not make these uh, the same genus. I generally don't think there's much point toward disputing generic level assignments or like trying to lump genera. We've talked a lot um, I'm a radical Daltonist, as I believe what this phrase describes. <laughs> um, a genus is a label of convenience for talking about related animals, and grouping things into the same genus is essentially an aesthetic hypothesis about how similar you think they are. Um, there's no reason, if they're separate genera right now, to not keep them that way. Um, th now, I think there's often a reason to split genera. If it turns out they're like polyphyletic or something, you do have to split them. But... I don't know. I think that I, I think these sorts of things are very academic discussions that don't really matter a lot. If this is Tyrannosaurus batar or if this is Tarbosaurus batar, it does not change my understanding of this animal in any way, shape, or form. No. Everything else I know about it is exactly the same. Ooh, I'm sorry. I, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. I'll take this opportunity to talk about phylogenum when Alex isn't here. Um, Aha. When the cat's away. When the cat's away. Hi, are you outside? I hope everything's okay. Oh, he's getting pizza. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everything's fine. So, so phylogenum. Yeah, so phylogenum. I mean, this is a Tyrannosaur... Well, actually, the paper was just published, so I can say this clade name. This is not one of my papers, it's somebody else's. This is a Tyrannosaurin, Tyrannosaurine, Tyrannosaurid, Tyrannosauroid. I hate homonyms. I hate right. classification. It, yes. <laughs> I had a stroke. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so the broad clade that this belongs to is Tyrannosauroidea. Um, this mm. is the group that we on the skeleton crew usually refer to as colloquially as Tyrannosaurs. So is it only like, a broad clade because all the dinosaurs in Jurassic World are female? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I'm really happy that I didn't do a study abroad program when I knew you, Scott. I did that beforehand. <laughs> I'd make the joke. You'd make the oh, joke. Oh, look at look at it rolling on the ground on the back there. Oh, that's oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god! All right, I love that. <laughs> oh my god! It's doing the death pose. It's the Black I've, Beauty death pose. I have instantly. This probably boosted it up a whole tier for me. <laughs> oh look at it go! Oh. <laughs> okay, that's tremendous. That's outstanding. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Oh, that's amazing. Good lord. 
Wow. Go on, James. <laughs> well, so this paper... It's a tyrannosaur, 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 tyrannosaur. Well, yes, so tyrannosaur already is what we usually refer to as tyrannosaurs in this group. Mm-hmm. And that group includes, or in this, uh, this group meaning the skeleton group, but this group of dinosaurs is uh, like things like Utyrannosaur, Tyrannosauroids, Proceratosaurus, uh, which is also in this game. Those are Proceratosaurids, which are the earliest diverging group within the clade, but they're Tyrannosaurs too. They're Tyrannosauroids. There is also a f- more restrictive than you might think clade called Tyrannosauridae, which is Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus is in this game. Displetosaurus, um, Teratophonius, Lythronax, a few, a few of these more poorly understood and uh, less well sampled Tyrannosaurs from southern North America, um, and then Tarbosaurus and T Rex and, uh, and Chucheng Tyrannus. Tyrannosauridae, like what is truly a Tyrannosaurid, is pretty restrictive, and they're almost all North American. Um, depending on whose phylogenetic hypotheses you accept, Allioramus and Chinchasaurus may also be Tyrannosaurids. Some people get them as outside that group. Some people get them as inside that group. Um, that's something that is in need of further, resol- uh, further resolution. Within that group, Tyrannosauridae, there are a couple of groups. There's Albertosaurinae, which is Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. Um, if Allioramus and Chinchasaurus are in that group, there's Allioraminae. There's Despletosaurinae, which is things like Despletosaurus. And then there's Tyrannosaurinae which is Tarbosaurus and T-Rex and Chucheng Tyrannus. Oh my god, he's got emergency pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you activated that's that's so that funny. <laughs> Sorry, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's fine. And then the, the final smallest group here is Tyrannosaurini, which is, I'm checking the definition of the group. I believe it is literally... Current, it's basically just Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Chucheng Tyrannus. So it's these three things that are the largest known Tyrannosaurus, the most heavily built Tyrannosaurus. Um, they appear at the end, end, end of the Cretaceous. They're only known from the late Mastrichtian, or well, some of these may be earlier Mastrichtian, but like they're very late. Like you think seventy million years forward. They're kind of this pinnacle that the group reaches in terms of body size, bite force, all of those nice things. There is an idea that Tyrannosaurus rex may have originated in Asia and migrated into North America because all of its closest relatives are um, from Asia. Uh, Based on the published phylogenies, I think it's equally likely that those groups had originated in North America and then migrated into Asia, not the other way around. Um, There's not any way to know right now, but more fossils will hopefully give us resolution on it. Yes, Alex? Um, Is the... Asia to U.S. hypothesis dependent at all upon Tarbosaurus and, well, at least Tarbosaurus being older than Zucheng Tyrannus and and Tyrannosaurus? I think it's partially, like, I think that's one of the reasons it's preferred is that those are older than Rex. So they are older and they're more basal, so the idea is, like, there's correlation there. Okay. But I I think it's it's just optimization on the phylogeny of the ancestral... uh, ancestral area um if tarbosaurus and shucheng tyrannus are each other's closest relatives i i think it diminishes the case for an asian origin for rex and it would actually be you know there there's some dispersal into asia but anyway there's actually a lot of ongoing research about the systematics of this group including some of my own and so i can't really speak too much more on the evolutionary history of tyrannosauroids but hopefully i will be able to soon Watch that the space. Watch this space. Watch this space. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff coming. Prepare to be mad. <laughs> Keep your peepers peeled. Keep your peepers peeled. Um, Tarbosaurus look just like T. Rex. <laughs> yeah. Is I mean, it, it's much less robust. Like the skull is not as proportionally wide. Um, it's just not as like heavily overbuilt as Rex is, even though it's heavily built compared to all other Tyrannosaurs. And Tarbosaurus does get quite large, um, but I think that in life it would have looked very, very much like T-Rex. It's That's like, why they... I'm sorry, you go ahead. I was, I was going to say, like, body mass and size estimates put it, like, just under Rex, if memory serves. I think so. I mean, 
it's definitely bigger than like Albertosaurus, Displetosaurus, or anything like that. Yeah. The largest Tarbosaurus specimens are pretty fragmentary, but we know that they got almost as big as Rex. Like they they're they're quite large. Yeah. Um, what one thing that's really cool about Tarbosaurus though is we actually have like more of them than any other Tyrannosaur. There are literally hundreds of individuals known. Including well-known growth stages. There are, in- including a very, very young baby, um, which is, like, beautifully preserved. It's not only a baby. It's, like, one of the best fossils ever discovered. It's nearly complete, beautiful skull. Here's one thing that's interesting about Tarbosaurus. Proportional to its size, it actually has the smallest arms of any Tyrannosaur. Hmm. It has wah, wah. Uh, Its arms are proportionally even smaller than T-Rexes. I have no idea why, but it's kind of neat. Um, neat. Yeah. Neat. So, yeah, I I think the design is okay. I don't think this was a bad way to distinguish it from T Rex, especially for a cartoon. I don't love the way that it looks here. Ooh, drinking and I do like that they bicker over water. Yeah. Um. Also, Tarbosaurus has the distinction of being um, the dinosaur involved in my favorite U.S. Supreme Court case that's ever happened. <laughs> which is, oh, yes. Yes. Uh, and I quote, the United States of America versus one Tyrannosaurus batar skeleton, which is such a funny. <laughs> that's got to be a movie because the cast yeah. would include Nicolas Cage. It, it would. Right. Oh, my God. Well, that wasn't his, unfortunately. But he oh, did really? also have one. No, he yeah. Ooh, his ooh, ooh, the one in the back is doing the stretch thing. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Alex, Alex, you haven't seen this. Seen this. Alex, enjoy. You're gonna love this. <gasps> oh, that, <laughs> oh right. my god! That's kind of like in prehistoric uh, planet, planet, right? Like it's there's a scene where it's kind of rolling around and kicking. Yeah. I wonder and if that's a reference. Probably. Might be. It might also be something that happens in the show. Mm. Could be. I've not watched the episode. The same. Since. Oh, I, I like that they bicker with each other as well. Like their social mm-hmm. interaction is mean. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so there are hundreds of these, um, but many of them are poached and have been uh, smuggled out of Mongolia into the private market. And so they're they're not only lost to science because they're privately owned, they're lost to science because they're illegally like collected and exported from Mongolia. Um, and there's been a really, really concerted international effort to repatriate them, which is something I think is really important because when you know when specimens are privately sold, the one saving grace we often have is that we at least kind of know who has it often. When they're smuggled, they're involved, you know, they wind up in the same channels as a lot of criminal enterprises. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're kind of dirty specimens until they can get back into, um, you know, into public trusts, into the government repositories. And If you're uh, interested in learning more about this, I'd recommend reading the book The Dinosaur Artist. It's I very good. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that would be a good book to read if you're interested in this. But the reason I bring this up is because um, one of the reasons Nicolas Cage went bankrupt... <laughs> is because he and Leonardo DiCaprio got into a bidding war over a Tarbosaurus skull that had been, uh, I guess, mar- they're often marketed as coming out of China because I think at that time you were able to do commercial collection in China. I, I don't believe you are anymore. And so a lot of things from Mongolia were marketed as being from Inner Mongolia or the Nai Mongol Autonomous Region in China, where at that point, there was a point where it was legal to collect for sale. Um, and so Nicolas Cage won the bidding war with DiCaprio and spent a lot of money and then basically immediately was contacted by the federal government of the U.S. working with Mongolia and was like, give us the Tarbosaurus right now. They had um, to knock on his castle. They had to knock on Well, I think he lost the castle, too, because of this. Does he still have the giant pyramid mausoleum in New Orleans? I think so. I so. Uh, it, it, you got to keep one thing for yourself, right? Just a little yeah. something. He did um, lose the island, too. No. Oh. I wonder if this is re- like there's a there's a little wildlife sanctuary in Kenosha near Carthage that we would go to for um, certain ecology class field trips because they have a really cool collection of herps that you wouldn't expect to find in a tiny little wildlife preserve. Um, not wildlife, I guess the t- tiny little animal house in 
uh, Kenosha, including a Komodo dragon named Shrimp, who's very cute. Um, <laughs> she's very she's very small for a Komodo dragon, but that's not Aww. the point. They apparently also have two water monitors that are Nicholas Cage's that were surrendered to <laughs> them. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, th- there's a reason that we all know if Nicolas Cage is the wacky guy who does, like, every movie, and that's because he lost nearly all of his money, and a big reason for that was partially the Tarbosaurus skull. This yeah. dinosaur Nicolas bankrupted Nicolas Cage. A great voice actor, uh, a, a great actor who uh, everyone should take more seriously because he kicks ass. No, he, he does. Really he does, I but I mean, that, fa- that weird phase in his career where he was doing, like, a lot of crappy movies was directly because, like, he just... He lost almost everything really rapidly. Like it was he needed just money. This, right. It was just a series of these really like kind of unforeseeable like I don't know right. if tragedy is the right word, but he he got very bad luck in a in a series of things, mm-hmm. and uh, and needed to make all of his money back. And I think that now that he's kind of gotten himself back to a comfortable place, he's making some really interesting movies. Like he, he's I'm really looking forward actor. to seeing that that dreaming one. Dream, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Mm. Which, I, uh, oh, really. actually, uh, real real quick, because I uh, I think I forgot to mention this earlier. Did I tell you guys I had our, I, I had my first skeleton crew themed nightmare last night? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I I had a, a dream that I was editing one of the videos and I had I was in charge of recording and just didn't press the record button for the whole thing and we just did not have footage for it and woke up in a cold sweat. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. That is a terrifying thought. Um, something I think is is worthwhile to discuss uh, with regards to the, the the unfortunately common private sale and smuggling of Tarbosaurus remains is that. I think that that is another big reason to keep the name Tarbosaurus, because a lot of auction houses market these specimens as Tyrannosaurus Tyrannosaurus. Batar, and they're like, oh, we're selling a Tyrannosaurus, and to the unscrupulous buyer, oh, I'm getting, like, essentially a T-Rex, and yes, it is essentially a T-Rex, but, like, the, the, the clout that comes with the name Tyrannosaurus versus Tarbosaurus, I think, is adversely affecting the, um... Well, don't the disproportionate export of the, of these fossils illegally. Don't right. I, th- I think no. it could also act as a smoke screen as well. But, can't, but you know, when they see the skull on the auction block, can't they tell it's obviously not T Rex? <laughs> <laughs> you make a you make a good point, especially with like as we can see on the model here. Uh, this is the only Tyrannosaur that has post orbital horns. <laughs> you know. I got to tell you, the way the post-orbital uh, corneal process develops in some individuals of Rex, it would not be as disti- different from this as you might think. In some of them, in some really? of them, it just it projects. There's some specimens like Tufts Love is like this, where it just it kind of is a big crest that points up a little bit like that. Hmm. It it wouldn't be as pronounced as this. Um, and I With think that there's kind of a like lot of variation eyebrow there. ridge and stuff. Well, no, the eyebrow ridge in front wouldn't happen. It would just it okay. would just kind of be like a little bit of a development out like that, um, wingling kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, this is very stylized. I kind of don't like the nipply scales down the tail. Ugh, no. It, it looks like you know when you pet a dog on the belly oh and just no got that row. Gee, oh no i can't unsee it now that's a hundred percent what they look like They're, it, it's nipply it's I dog nipples is, i think that's a, a reference to an old retro model of this of tarbosaurus hmm. are you talking about the no. throat thing no of t-rex like like old old tyrannosaur art. i was doing something with the peabody today and they were fishing through all like these old like dinosaur toys and models they had for like teaching and there was a little Tyrannosaur model that had like literally that exact patterning down its back and tail. Hmm. Like, like I'm talking like, like tail dragging, like sixties pose. Interesting. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Strange. So maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't say for certain, but. In case you're wondering what characters distinguish Tarbosaurus from Tyrannosaurus, they include the absence of an accessory rostrodorsal process of the lacrimal that changes the articular form between the lacrimal and the nasal, and a projecting flange that goes kind of up from the ventral margin of the maxilla to partially enclose a channel with the antorbital fossa. By which I mean nothing you would see externally 
Um, <laughs> it would be really, I mean, they would probably have been very different, like coloration and external, like patterning wise, because that's how animals that are closely related do tend to differ from one another. Yes. Um, but in terms of the general overline body, overall body shape and outline and everything, I mean, they, they would look very, very, very similar. Like, yeah, it's, like a, it's a in a fleshed lion, out model without skin. It's it's a lion tiger situation where like like I don't think that if you put them next to each other in real life, anyone would mistake them. But if you put the skeletons next to each other, it would take a tyrannosaur expert specifically to differentiate them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. there's been a lot of discussion on paleontology Twitter in the last week or so leading up to the release of this DLC about whether you need to do this to make Tarbosaurus distinguishable from T-Rex or you don't. Um, I think that anatomically, in terms of skeletal anatomy, a lot of the reason that Tarbosaurus looks so distinct to many lay people is that most Tarbosaurus specimens we're looking at are not fully grown. Um, the fully grown Tarbosaurus individuals we have are generally not that complete and do indicate a much more T-Rex-like proportion. The only obvious difference is that the back of the skull is not quite as wide proportionally. Right? T-Rex has a more heavily developed adductor chamber for jaw musculature. So I do think that the designers in Camp Cretaceous were justified in trying to make it more obviously different while still keeping it very T-Rex themed. Um, but I'm not saying that that's how it would have been in life. Again, they would have been probably very easily distinguishable by color pattern and a host of other things with behavior and soft tissue and all sorts of things that don't fossilize. Um, but I don't, I, I don't think that uh, this was a bad thing to do. But, mm -hmm. and with that, I'm happy to rank it if nobody else has anything do further we, to say. Do we want to breed a T-Rex to compare or are we happy? I'm okay. Uh, I'm happy. When we do, when we do T-Rex, we can do one that's of these bad. to compare at that yeah. time. Smart. Yeah, let's rank. I'm going to go to one that's not asleep. Are we going in order this time? Let's yeah, let's go first. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. It looks fine. I'm not bothered by the the spikies because it's Jurassic Park and like, I, I'm sorry, it's Jurassic World, and it's like, all right, that's kind of their design philosophy. Um, it looks. I mean, it is stupid, and they didn't have to do that. They could have just made it a wildly different color. But like, as we've said now a couple of times, like once you put skin on these animals, you couldn't tell them apart. At least we don't know how they would have been distinguishable from the bones alone uh, once they had skin on them. Because um, something like, I don't know, you said one of the diagnosable traits is the contact of the nasal and the lacrimal bone. Right. Like, that, that does not have a soft tissue consequence that no. you can see. None right. whatsoever, right. You know, like, so it doesn't bother me. Also, like, again, the context of this design, which given that we're ranking designs and not accuracy, I think the context of these designs is important. It's for a children's cartoon. Um, just changing the color might not necessarily be enough of an indicator to a child that this is a different animal from the T-Rex that they already know. Um, especially given that the T-Rex has a couple different colors in the movies. Like, the one, like in, in each movie, it's kind of a different color, which is okay. Um, there's a different fine. one in Camp Cretaceous, too. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just, there's, it's, it's all okay. It's all fine. Everybody needs to calm down. I think it's fine. Um, I'm heavily despite the the. Uh, I'm heavily contemplating giving this a spite rating, uh, but I will not. <laughs> uh, I I will give it a B because it's not great, but it's stylized and the colors are pretty. And in the game, it looks a lot better than it does in the show because in the show it looks yeah. like a cartoon. But this actually looks kind of fun. It reminds me of the Giga, and I really don't dislike the Giga at all. Um, okay. I'll give it a B. I would also give it a B. I've said my piece on this animal. I don't need to say more. I would also give it a B, but I actually really like the sound design. I feel like one unfortunate thing in the Jurassic World era has been that the new animals don't really get distinct sounds that are very characteristically them. And like the sounds from the original Jurassic Park trilogy are so iconic. Like every dinosaur has its own really distinct and really evocative vocal repertoire. Like the Spinosaurus sounds nothing like the T-Rex. In the newer movies, everything kind of sounds the same. And I like that this has 
you know, some degree of its own identity. Um, and I, I think that that's actually going to, for me, also with the rolling in the ground thing, which is very cute, I think that bumps this up to an A for me, but probably a low A. Wow. Ooh. Oh, right. wow. Okay. I would say that, like, I understand that it is a monumentally difficult task to make this look, like, demonstrably different from Tyrannosaurus. Like, I do kind of wish that they went... Well, I mean, they kind of did. They kind of went to an almost prehistoric kingdom sort of thing of just, like, give it some soft tissue. Because the, the main thing that differentiates the prehistoric kingdom one is it has the a big doolap. And it's just a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit smaller and has some different color patterns. Um, I kind of can't get over the fact that it kind of looks like those artists, like, draw T-Rex from memory challenges. Like, it, ha- it it gives the vibes that you would remember from a T-Rex or a, tyran- a, a like a large Tyrannosaur, but not being like referenced to anatomy and stuff as strongly. Um, so like, I can tell generally what it's supposed to be. I I wish that it was a little bit more interesting. I think it's fine. I'll give it a B as well. Oh, damn. All right. Well, I guess it's up to me. Or Dalton. Um, Or Dalton. Also. Well, I mean, like the order. I'm next, right? Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, I thought you meant you were doing the final decision. I'm sorry, Alex. No. Apologies. It's up to me to give it something low to drag it into the dirt. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Um, I think it's okay. Um, I like the sound I heard on Twitter a little while ago. I like that it rolled over and did a cute thing. Some of the head stuff looks a little funky to me, and like the the median the median spines are kind of I don't love them, but I do kind of like the bumpily scales on the top, uh, in that they kind of have this very retro dinosaur feel to them. And you know, I've, I'm in my in my line of work in my in my area of focus, all crocodiles look the same, like. If, if, if someone was like, hey, you know, crocodiles, what's up with them? I'm like, oh, they all look the same. All, you know, even the li- every single living crocodile looks the same. You get them like similar size. I'm like, yeah, sure. So, you know, and, you know, I know some of them have like pointier snouts. Some of them have shorter snouts. But like the average person doesn't know. And you know what? I don't really care. I'm like, that's fine. You don't work on these. So I can understand, you know, if they found the skeletons, which are even less similar. Uh I'm sorry, even more similar in that they don't lack the cool scales that are often used to distinguish very closely related uh, species of reptiles in many cases. Like, I get it. I get it. I don't care. This is fine. Um, And like James pointed out, this is an animal that in life would have looked a lot like T-Rex. And they they opted, you know, well, they they were constrained by the show. But the show decided, it's like, hey, we're going to kind of go with like a spiky Jurassic World retro look. And I think it's fine. I think the show's very bad, but I think the design is fine. And thus, I say to it, a low B, and that's that B is coming from the adorable rolling around it did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are my feelings. Yeah. I'm, I think, unfortunately, going to take us out of kindness corner just a little bit. I actively don't like it. Mm. Um, I appreciate that they did have to distinguish it from T-Rex, but I also would counter that with they didn't have to put it in the show. I don't blame Frontier for this. I blame the show. It's true. Like, oh, we have to we have to ruin a dinosaur in order to include it. So let's just do that. It's 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 part of a, a broader symptom of the franchise, a little bit of kind of starting to treat them like Pokemon in a way of like, oh, we've got to collect them all and like got to show them all. And you know, I I almost admire to an extent the restraint of the the first three movies of how many dinosaurs they were going to introduce. Something I'd never thought I would say. Because if you had asked me, even after Jurassic World had come out, like, oh, do you want them to add a ton of new species to the movie? I'd be like, absolutely. I want to see more dinosaurs. Um, and then uh, Fallen Kingdom came out, and it's just kind of like, it's too much. It's, you did a little too much. Um, and, and I think Camp Cretaceous has taken it a little bit even further. Of like, Camp Cretaceous has done too much in a lot of ways. <laughs> in adding dinosaur species that it probably shouldn't have added. 
in adding stupid robots that it definitely shouldn't have added. Um, there's a lot that Camp Cretaceous went too far. And this and is I one one aspect of that. And I assume, like, mass graves in the back of the animation studio at the rate at which they produce episodes. Because it would be, like, four months and the new season would be out. I'm like, that, how, how are they doing this? Yeah, that was insane. Um, yes, I think they were presented with a monumentally hard task of how do you make a Tarbosaurus distinguishable to a child audience. Amelia put that very well. They unfortunately went the route of turning a dinosaur into a bit of a crocodile. These, these crocodilian scoots, it's a Jurassic World symptom, and usually I'm not so bothered by it, but I'm very bothered by it with Tarbosaurus, and I think it's because it's so similar to the Tyrannosaurus, which, like, scientifically we know it wouldn't have these, and also design aesthetic in the, the franchise, it doesn't have these kinds of features. I might be more okay with it if it was just the mid-dorsal scale row um, or some other soft tissue distinguishing it. I think this design has inherited some weird head blockiness and, and not in the Tyrannosaur way, but in like a, like a pit bull way or just like a cartoon way. Um, because again, it comes from a cartoon and I think it all hurts the design quite a bit. Um, I don't think I dislike it enough to put it in D tier. So I was going to put it in C tier, the sound design and the rolling around that, that rolling animation, whoever came up with that, you, you just saved this thing because I'm going to give it a B solely because it's elevated by its social behaviors and its sound design. Um, but I, I will be on record of saying, I think, as a design from the show, this is bad. Well, uh, then. B for bad. In that <laughs> B for bad. In that case, the bees have it. And Tarbosaurus... Was this bees across the board? Bruh. No, no. Um, James put oh, James. A. I gave it an A. I think I'm too soft on my study systems. Um, yeah, I get it. It goes in B tier. Yeah. Oh, concrete wall. All right. Can we ascend the phylogeny and do a very a brief discussion of the, the weird giant turkey that came out in time for Thanksgiving? Bacock? We can. Bacock? So we leap from... Another we, turkey noises. Well, obviously we're still in Slurosaurus because you can't leave your intestinal clade, but we move up the tree towards birds into Peneraptora to an Oviraptorosaur, um, and specifically, uh, so within Oviraptorosaurs, and we've talked, we, we've done Oviraptor, right? Yes. We, we have, yeah. yes. So, yep. in the grand scheme of Oviraptorosaurs for our viewers, there are the early ones. This is, you know, an organisms like Canipteryx, uh, things that still have teeth. We move up. And you have a big two split. And I know there's other stuff at the base of the tree. Some of that's unpublished. And the other ones are weird flying things, maybe. Don't worry about it. We have our big split. We have Oviraptor, Oviraptorosaurids. Is it a family distinction or is it a subfamily distinction? Oviraptorins. Uh, so it's Oviraptorids and Canignathids. Oviraptorids and Canignathids. Oviraptorids are things like Oviraptor and Cytopatty, one of which is in the game. And this is our first uh, first Synagnathid in the game. And the only Synagnathid probably will get in the game. Synagnathid, or is how I just said it, Canignathid, for anybody confused at home. Canignathid, sorry. It, it, I mean, <laughs> it's a I hear dog. it everywhere. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. that one's different enough that I wanted to make sure our audience wasn't lost by no, that. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think we should reveal the Canignathid. Yeah. Let's... Here comes the I creature. I have not watched this. Yeah. I haven't either. Ooh. Oh, he, oh, I like how he bobs his head. Ooh. That's a big bird. Good sounds. I was muted. Sorry. It looks so evil. Like that. that <laughs> it does. I know that that Cittipati is is kind of in this game, but not really. But that is this is this. This gives Cittipati. It's just stalking and staring and bobbing, oh, and I don't trust it. It's one of the most evil animals that probably ever lived. Oh, it's too big. Yeah. And I don't mean that, like, accuracy-wise. I mean that... No, like, it's bad. Right. Objective <laughs> it's, sense. I, I oh. remember, like... Uh, oh, God. Perfect positioning. Look Ooh, at I this. Like, I like the dance, though. Ooh, that's great. It's not fooling me. <laughs> yeah, I still don't trust him. I, sure, dance, okay. Yeah. So, oh, the preens. That's good. I like the pyroraptor. Oh, oh, did wait? Did you guys hear that? It had a, a yeah. fun little like sound cue thing of it has beak clacking noises. Hmm. So they're omnivores in the game. They yeah. are omnivores in the game. I'll put in some. I'm probably in them. life. 
I, yeah. I think that this thing kind of ate whatever it wanted to. Let me make sure. James. Yes. So what do we actually have of this guy? Well, it's funny. I was just about to mention that. We have a lot of the postcranial skeleton. We have a whole leg and most of an arm and a hand. Um, and we have the bottom of all the dorsal vertebrae. It's like they eroded from the top down, so we just have the centra. There's mm -hmm. one missing. And then there's the lower half of the sacrum and pelvis, and then a whole tail. And there's also mm -hmm. a mandible. More than I thought. Yeah, that's and, a, that is more than I thought. It, well, so it comes from an area that's got a really um, kind of annoying fossil record. Um, it comes from this locality uh, called Irindabasu. In, that we have talked about before. Yeah, Archaeornithomimus is from. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot we talked about Archaeornithomimus. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's a forgettable creature, that Archaeornithomimus. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> Irindabasu is in the, it's in the Gobi Desert. Um, it's located geopolitically within um, the Nai Mongol Autonomous Region in, uh, in China, which is something you'll often hear described as Inner Mongolia, especially in older texts. Um, this is one of the areas that was hit by the AMNH crews early on before they started finding the like flaming cliffs type localities that have a lot more bone and bone at higher quality. Um, but a lot of important discoveries were made in Irindabasu. The interesting thing about Irindabasu is we don't really know how old it is. And I think we discussed that in Archaeornithomimus. Yeah. Um, it could be middle Cretaceous, late middle Cretaceous. It could also be late Cretaceous. The different indicators we use to age the beds are giving wildly different signals. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry. I just saw its run animation in yeah, the back there. Terrifying. That is horrific. Oh, my God. We're going to have to see that again. But like, oh, wow, that You're triggered okay. my fight or flight. It, it, it's, it's scary. This is terrible. Anyway, so we have a lot of um, Gigantoraptor skeleton. We don't have a whole head. And I think this head is based a lot on Anzu. Which we also don't have the yeah. whole head for, but we have a lot more than we have of this. Um, and but, related, right? Oh, I mean, it's related. Anzu is another Canignathid. Canignathids are characterized by one. this. It, it's, I mean, it's not as big as this, but it, it's oh, really nowhere big. near. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, there's there's some big Anzu material. Um, Canignathids are defined, or the, not defined, but diagnosed by <gasps> this kind of really long, low mandible with a peak that comes up at the front. Um, which looks different than Ophiraptor mandibles, which are much shorter and stouter. So we know no. this is a Canignathan very well. It's also got this laterally bowed humerus that is another Canignathan trait. So the bone actually like bows out laterally along the shaft instead of being straight. Some interesting stuff. Look at this sit animation. This is perfect. Yeah. I have a dumb. I have a dumb question. In your in your professional opinion, Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Where is this animal in its food chain, in its local food chain? Highest point. I mean, okay, wherever it wants is... to be. I think I think it's a switch. <laughs> God damn it! Oh, you can hear it clacking as it eats. Yeah. Oh, he munched. Ooh. Clack clack clack. Um. It, it, God, it's it's the kid from Annihilation. We're not Annihilation. Uh, hereditary. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I switch movies that trigger my fight or flight in my head. I make them all the same. <laughs> oh, I. I love her. Editor. Oh, I mean, oh, it's me a great too. movie. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but it's a great movie. <laughs> you know, Dalton, I was thinking about Hereditary, uh -huh. and it's like, it is, I was thinking about your criticism of the Babadook. Yeah. And that's like, that's like a yelling family movie where it works, and I was like, yeah, Dalton's right. No, yeah, I haven't even seen it, and I know that that's the correct take. <laughs> I've seen Hereditary. No, Hereditary. I've seen the Babadook, and I hate it. Oh, um, it's my favorite horror movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not uh oh, be I'm sorry. I'm, gonna that, I'm sorry that we have a differing opinion. I'm going to no, come back in here Please. to just say, Ophiraptorid diet has been really hard to figure out, and we've touched on this a bunch of times because they have a beak, and beaks generally are you know don't show this kind of tight correlation to food source that like teeth do. Um, things with beaks can kind of eat what they want. I think that Ophiraptorosaurs were probably mostly herbivores, but were able to eat any sort of like animal food that they wanted as well. And so, I mean, the general argument has been they're primarily herbivorous. I could see them being omnivores in the truest sense as well. That spike in Sidipati's mouth. It does feel like it's for breaking things, right? The murders, the, 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 them, Ophiraptorosaurs basically re-evolve a tooth. After having lost their teeth. Right, but just to kill things like Anton Chigurh style right through the brain <laughs> <Yeah>. case. <laughs> um, That's just my two cents on it. 
what I want to emphasize to everybody watching this at home, because this is built in proportioned like a small animal. And that's what I find mo- most disturbing about Gigantoraptor. Yeah. Okay. Like it looks, and I mean, we know this from its actual proportions of the fossil. I so desperately want this to be a messed up looking animal. I want it to be like Dinochirus. You know what I mean? Where yeah. you can see what mm-hmm. kind of thing it is, but it's like heavy and overbuilt because it's massive. This thing is right. built like a smaller Canignathid. It is so big. It looks like a Lord of the Rings force perspective bull thing. <laughs> right. Is there anything we can add to this for scale? Because can we put an Oviraptor next to it? Let Let's put oh in God. some other carnivores in here. Yeah. What a wonderful first. transition, Amelia. And I'll, I'll just I'll make a menagerie for us with all this. Now, some James, and and this is something because, like, I don't, j- just just to build off what you said a little bit, right? So, like, in in the before times, back when paleontology was real crude. The distinction back between the, was more Sorry. crude. Uh, back when paleontology was more crude, the distinction between like uh, your, your two theropod flavors were carnosaur and slurosaur. Right, right. Big, big, big crunch, small guy. And then people came along and they sorted it out. And like, yeah, so so slurosaurs are mostly small-bodied predators. Um, uh, you know, except for tyrannosaurs, which are kind of like these. You know, they evolve giant sizes. And then it was like, okay, but also. Um, Therizinosaurs also evolved giant sizes. Oh, mm-hmm. wait, and also ornithomimosaurs, and now also oviraptorosaurs, and also dromaeosaurs. So it seems that all slur, like, it, with the exception of alvarosaurs, which are very small, and some of the so smaller paravians. Yeah, so far, I'm waiting for them <laughs> to find a 20 foot long, like, horrif- Yeah. So, like, and, and th- ancestrally, they are small, but. Maybe there's something, obvi- obviously, I think it's partially a, herbiv- a herbivory thing where these clades that, like there is dinosaurs and, and galaponothomimosaurs that are herbivorous are making giants, but I don't know. This feels oh, like, this God. one feels evil. This is the first one that feels evil. Well, yeah, and it feels <laughs> evil because it's built like a, a like a Tim Burton monster, right? It's all <laughs> angles and it's all angles and sticks. It, it has these long legs. It looks like a small bird. This thing was 11 feet tall at the hips, and it's got this long neck. This thing could have looked into a two, second story window, and it just looks like a turkey. Oh my God. What does it Alex, look like? I just when imagine it someone. Yeah. You, see, you know the like trench that runs by our house? This thing oh, could no. be standing in it and pecking at our windows. Maybe it could eat, if it's an omnivore, maybe it can eat that yellow jacket nest. Or just all the garbage. <laughs> oh, this is an animal that would eat garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, it's it's just so upsettingly big. Like, look at it's it in comparison to Carnotaurus over there. And you know, and it's I saw in the big. discourse in in the discourse about it, kind of when the the t- trailer was released, a lot of people were like saying, "It feels I don't know. There's something about it that just it looks weird." And it I does. think you know where sometimes the criticism is is people being silly. I think that is the correct response, which is I don't think there's any way to make this thing that doesn't feel deeply well. upsetting <laughs> yeah like yeah b- besides the fact that like like i did see, you're right i did see just a lot of um criticism that was just like it just looks incorrect and i'm like uh-huh um yeah, yeah. But, it shouldn't um, be able to look like that but it does but it did uh, and like the, the only other criticism that I that I saw that I know that we touched on a little bit kind of obtusely earlier, but I think bears mentioning directly is most reconstructions of Gigantoraptor lack a head crest. Yes. And we don't have a proper skull, so we don't know if it did or not. Mm-hmm. But a lot of other Kenignathids do have head crests, so I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility well, that it did. You know, when you say a lot of other Kenignathids, several other Kenignathids. What you mean is Anzu? Anzu has a head crest. <laughs> right. no. You're right. You're right. I, I forget. No, no, no. I, no. I, I did genuinely forget about the the tendency that Kenignathids have of detonating with martyrdom upon death. So yeah. we don't actually that was know the what they look reward. like. Right. I mean, there. I I think from the available skull material that is sometimes considered chirostenotius, it probably also had a head crest. But we have literally no idea what most of these things look like. The Koenig Nathan fossil record is one of the most incomplete and most frustrating. It's mostly like leg bones, which Ooh. are good for some things, but are they make it really hard to do taxonomy. 
Oh, we're yeah, gonna get we're gonna like get this. a good. Oh, look at this threat posture there's with the arms all you. puffed out. Oh my god! Look at how big it is compared to the tarbo. Right. Holy yeah. shit! Oh, That's my god. the god. real size comparison. What is, it, love, what is its human kill animation? It doesn't have one, actually, sadly. Oh, dang. It doesn't hunt people? Whack. No, it doesn't. It actually doesn't hunt in the game. Oh. Um, it, it only, only eats kills. from the car. <laughs> <laughs> it kills for fun. It, 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 only, for it, only, it only eats from the, the meat feeder. It doesn't mm. actually actively hunt. Mm. But... Um, why don't we Damn. see it at least defend itself? And Dalton, why don't you speed it up a little bit here? Sure. Because yeah. I think you guys are going to go bananas over <laughs> over this animation. A fight is a fight is about to a fight is occurring. I God, I, I love its, its threat so posture. Big. I haven't seen the notification pop up, so I think they're just yelling at each other. Okay. Will a hunt begin? Is that no, it'll say fight? a fight begins. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Okay, let me just... Uh, um, while we wait, I think there's one thing that is worth saying about these things. Mm -hmm. they, they were everywhere. There are no other body fossils yet published of a large, like a gigantoraptor-sized uh, oviraptorosaur. But gigantic oviraptorosaur eggs... Yeah, are found in many places, and so kind of like Dinochirids, which like we have like traces of them existing aside from Dinochirus itself. I think we're up to three now, right? Oh, oh no, no, uh, those something, two are fighting. Something God, like that. It. Of course, they're fighting. The girls are fighting. Dinochirids, like there, there's trace remains that show that they may have been present in North America, but they're like toe bones as, in terms of what's published right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we have like all of these giant oviraptorosaur eggs. It, so like things like this were all over the place for a little while. No, a, a, no, you don't like that. I've just I've just decided I don't believe that. I, I, I'm right. they <laughs> for were the all, greater good. They were leaving no body fossils. They never appeared in the fossil record. They didn't uh, and, die. And you find just eggs that are clearly <laughs> oviraptorosaur. They could not be killed. They're dancing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're dancing still. Yes, the the eggs are like this long. Like Jeez. for those at home, they're almost two feet long. Half those a are meter. bigger than a moa. Oh, I mean, they're they're not. I don't know if they're, volume wise they're bigger because they're very narrow. Oh, thin, right? But they're they're like pill shaped. They're really, really, really big. And wow, there's others guys... from Asia. There's there's eggshell attributed to them from North America. Uh, like they're they're all over the place. Um. And there's some cool research about them that will be coming out soon, but I can't talk about it yet. Yay, cool research that's coming out soon that we can't talk about. Exactly. Um, Comes to breaks. Can I can I say one thing before we go on to the ranking? Because I don't know how much more we have to say about this. Oh, hang on. Let me turn on herbivores don't, uh, don't starve so that all of the brachiosauruses and stuff don't die in the corner. Oh. Because I don't just have to deal with a bunch of notifications. <laughs> oh, smart. Good, smart man. Uh, uh, while, we... while you do that, I will just say for anybody interested, if you are interested in reading more about these giant eggs that pop up in different places, including North America and Asia, um, the ICNO or the OO taxon, the egg taxon for these remains, Ooh, is taxon. Macro Elongatolithus. It's which such a hard name to means, say. It means big, big long, long egg, egg rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. Whoa! Oh, oh my god! Whoa. It jumped on its head! It killed it! <laughs> oh, so oh, cool! <laughs> did it just it, kick oh it to god. death? Oh, yes, yeah, it what did. It, like, its eyes should so, be squeezing out. What, what happens is the Tarbo goes in for a bite, and it jumps up and kicks its head into the ground, and it falls over, and then it jumps on its skull. That's, That's so cool. I <laughs> love Gigantoraptor. He's That's king. We, we need to... I, I really, really hope we can get a, a fight with it in Carnotaurus as well, because it's Carnotaurus animation, I think, is possibly better. Well, we'll keep it rolling. Yes. It rolling. I just wanted to say, and we, we can kind of see it, and this is something... Um, so, yes, if you look at its arm, look at its arm, if you will. 
I'm assuming we're looking at the arm because now mine has frozen yes, again. Yes, we are. Yes. Um, you notice that there are a bunch of nice feathers. Yeah. Uh, which actually are not present in Overraptor and should be. Um, so it has these nice, long, tenacious feathers. Uh, and you might notice, viewer, that they also appear to be coming off of the humerus. Now, we know flight feathers attached to the ulna and are spread out over the hand, which they kind of do in this model. It, 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 it's a little model cheat, but it's fine. Um, but, dear viewer, you might have heard in, in passing on the internets or in your spheres that uh, there are no long, tenacious feathers attached to the humerus. This is wrong. This is a, a wrong thing people repeat. Uh, there are these things called tertials, which are part on the upper arm. Uh, and, you know, whether they were this long or not, I couldn't tell you, but there are long, tenacious feathers mm -hmm. on, on bird forelimbs that are on the upper arm. I think there That's is all. some debate, though, about when tertiary feathers evolved. Because to my understanding, they're not found in a lot of uh, feather-preserved sure, parabians. Sure. So it's possible that they weren't present in these animals, but I think it's also possible they've just been lost. I think they're an Anki I think we're about to see another fight. They're I hope so. Right now. Nah. Damn. But I, I think there are tertials in Anki -Ornus. And I mean, given that Anki is probably a, a basal ivy allen. Right. And That's that not might, surprising. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Zooming out. I'm going to make some more Carnotaurus just to see if I can um, precipitate a fight. Up, Come on. The odds, yeah. Come on. Whatever. Who I cares? just want to see a Carnotaurus get curb stomped by this very badly, and then I think yeah. we should rank it. Ooh, In fact, maybe we cool. could rank it while we wait. This is, this is an embarrassing thing to admit, and it's kind of cringe and edgy, but like it would be very funny if after it killed a Carnotaurus, there was an animation of it like pulling the horn out of its foot like a barb. It's like, oh, ouch. That'd be great. Oh, I've stepped that'd be on cute. A, I've stepped on a huge bar. Now let me tell you all a story about a beach I was once on that made me old. No. <laughs> but I was in Costa Rica many years ago, and I was with a friend of mine, and we were doing like sea turtle ecology stuff. And he met this girl he really liked, and they started talking, and we were walking up the beach together, and he would walk ahead of me and talk to this girl, and I was busy. Like I'd, I'd be behind him. I was looking at stuff, uh, enjoying the beach, and I stepped on... A, th a thorn that was about this big, just one of those real strong, sturdy ones, Ouch. right into the soft part of my foot. And I said, Nick, I have, I, I need someone just to lean on so I can kind of like hobble back and wash this out because there's no way uh, this is a clean wound now. Um, he didn't hear me or chose to ignore me and walked all the way up the beach. So I basically hopped almost a mile back to where we were staying and then just walked over to this communal shower and looked at him and then picked up my foot and grabbed the thorn and pulled it out. And let me tell you, it kept coming. It felt like it just should have stopped coming out of my foot. Um, but it was just in the gross fatty part with all the dead skin. So there was actually no blood. Oh, here we go. A fight. A fight is happening. It said that a fight, fight. was happening. This one's just ah, drinking for now, but... I think they're assuming the position. The ground. Well, I might miss it because Oof. it's being so good. Slow kick. Down. These should all be very weak Carnotauruses. So is this another kick? Please, please don't disengage. Go to the death. Uh oh! I'm gonna be so fucking mad if I miss this. They disengage. Oh. Cowardice. Mode. If, if, this takes, if, this takes, if this takes too long, I, yeah. we Amelia, can, what I do you just... what do you rank this animal? What? Sorry, I was looking at my cat. What um, do you rank this animal? <laughs> though? Not that animal. I know no. he's H tier. He is H tier. Um, B. No. <laughs> I rank my own cat a C B. For no. Cat. <laughs> C. Forget. No. Um, so this is a being of great evil, and it. But it's. But it's. <sighs> I've been thinking about for the past like couple of minutes if we should erect a tier that's equal to H, but it's for the evil boys. I don't know what it would be. Um, but anyway, I digress. It's very good. It, it has elicited exactly the response that it deserves. Oh, fight. Um, which is the way I feel any time I have to be in the presence of a Cytopody fossil at the AMH. They're squaring up. Yeah, sorry. I'm Now I'm distracted. No. Okay. Well, they ran away. Whatever. The point is, it's S. It's so good. There's not a flaw. It's pretty. It's evil. It kicks. It clacks. 
it smacks it smacks yeah so i'm torn because i find this model visually ugly but i don't think that's because it's a bad design i think because it, this is because it's a terrible animal that is uh, an affront to god and <laughs> is proof that if god does exist he is not benevolent um this is I, I mean, it's just, it's a it's an awful demon. Oh, we've got another fight. Let's see, maybe this one will go to completion. Go to completion. Ooh, he's bloody. It's terrible, awful monster, but I think I, I don't... Oh, I just, here we go! Oh, my God. Yeah, kick him. I love that. <laughs> it you looks... Secretary oh. birds it to death. F*** it. S tier. That made it us tier. Such a cool, oh, weird animal. man. I, I love that it really kind of does do the secretary bird thing of just the, the kicking it on the ground like that. Oh, man. That's great. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, I do, wish, do we know for like any of the smaller critters if it just slaps them? Because that's really what I want. Like the Therizinosaur? As, as far as I yeah. know, it doesn't actually fight with anything smaller than a Carnotaurus. Hmm. Yeah. One thing that I did not notice before now, Dalton, if we could just zoom in on the head. They did give it the whole cassowary cask-esque thing, I think. Like, the whole front of the face is covered in keratin. It is, mm -hmm. yes. Which is an interesting choice, and I, I don't think that's particularly likely. But with Canignathids, I'm much more willing to buy a keratinized crest than I am with things like Cidipati and other Ophiraptorids. There's a lot of pneumatization in Ophiraptorids, but the crest of these guys does, I think in some cases, look a little bit more rigid. So Interesting. I'm more willing to buy it. Um, but then again, we actually don't have a lot of the crest of Anzu, which is the only one which we have very good skull material for. But as, no, as reconstructed, it's still pretty pneumatic. I think it probably wasn't heavily keratinized in any case, but I can see a little more with these guys. I think that's the only aspect of the design I don't like is this like kind of very smooth, fe like featureless feeling carrot in front of the head. But it's minor and the animations are so cool. Has to be S tier. I'm going to echo this. This thing's S tier. It is gorgeous in a demonic way. It is. Oops. Sorry, I had a revelation. It's S for sinister. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is you. indeed a sinister <laughs> You took my bit. <laughs> God, um, <laughs> this is indeed an incredibly sinister creature. I love its coloration and its patterns and stuff. Especially, I do really like the the pattern that gives it the red mohawk and the blue accents to its tail and arms. Um, God, its animations are gorgeous. And the sounds it makes are great. It is just the it is the correct type of demon that i want in my parks and uh i'm it's s tier <sighs> it's s for scary now <laughs> which is not as good that's all i yeah i mean i've said everything i liked about it someone else talk I, uh, I, <laughs> I echo James a bit, and there, there's something about it that just doesn't fully gel with me, and I don't think it's just because it's a weird creature. There's like a smoothness going on that yeah. I don't think is, is really the design so much as like the, the computer executing the design, and I can't fully put my finger on what it is. Um, but that is that is overshadowed by the incredible animation and behavior, um, and and just the design itself is great. So yeah, it's an S tier. Uh, I'll say S for smooth because I think that's something <laughs> weird is going on with the smoothness of it. But it's an S. Alrighty, well, the S's have it, and this huge evil monster is going to go right up into S tier. Is it time? All right. And now it's time to round out this video, folks. It's Alex, the last. What, for? what clade are we going to? Well, we're zip zop zooping up the tree, not particularly far, to Heravians, uh, and specifically dromaeosaurs. So of the of the organisms in this pack, 
this is the one most closely related to birds, which might surprise you because uh, the last one looked a lot like a big bird. But this is closer to the true birds. Yes. And uh, we are within dromaeosaurs, uh, and we're almost certainly within eudromaeosaurs, so the true dromaeosaurs. These are things like Deinonychus and Velociraptor, mm -hmm. and unlike uh, Microraptor or the house Caraptorines, which are either earlier diverging. In the case of Microraptor, early dromaeosaurs, and in the case of house Caraptorines, either early dromaeosaurs or another interesting kind of paravian. Um, and Utah Raptor is the big boy. We're not sure uh, within Eudromaeosaurs where Eutraptor goes, um, whether it's a Sornithlestine, a Velociraptorine, or what I think is much more likely and has been found more in the past is just some early diverging uh, Eudromaeosaur that does not neatly fit into one of the later groups. <laughs> I think it's also been put in Dromaeosaurine too. Uh, I mean, cool. every every dromaeosaur that gets named goes through dromaeosaurinae to go somewhere else later. It's like the halfway house on the yes. way to being placed. Um, and the described material for this uh, for this for Utahraptor is pretty limited. Um, we have a, a I think a partial mandible, at least a dentary. It uh, could fit in this trash can here. Elements from of the a DLC. Nice. We wrapped it all. We got all, we got it all in there. The, the this trash is what can. we've all been waiting to see. Um, the yes, and there's post crania, uh, including a big meaty claw. Uh, but there is, and this is probably known to some of our audience. There is the block. There is the block. The block provides, and there might be a lot more uh, in terms of material and specimens uh, of Utahraptor to be known in the future. Yes. Right. And, um, and, and some now, cool people. And some cool people are probably going to be involved with doing stuff with it. Yes. And now let's actually see some Utah Raptors. Yes. I was yes. trying I to make a cool excited. visual joke, and I think that, Alex, the, 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 your stream kind of prohibited you from realizing that I was doing that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I it was a waste of basket would, tax on? I, well, no I, no. I was just making a joke that everyone's excited to see Utah Raptor, so I'm going to show a trash can. And I thought Alex Aww. would stop at some point, but he just kept going and kept going. <laughs> no, see, I, so, I, had, I had the yellow circle. Well, in any case, let's look at Utah Raptor. Oh, uh, let's please. Oh, Lord, he coming. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. Look at that one. Oh my god, look at their feather. Look at the patterning of the tip at the is, ends of its feathers. Is this oh. the first one where the feathers move at all? It, he does a little I think pump. so. It the the little feathers on the yeah. head, they go up and down for the mood and actually in a very very birdie way. Whoa. And look at the white one. But but I think what Amelia was asking is no, Pyroraptor no, no. doesn't do that, right? Yeah. Um, the, the Pyroraptor model? I don't believe it does. Oh, oh, the social animation. Wait, look. Oh, I'm frozen. I'll just have to imagine. <gasps> They're rolling. Oh, what are they doing? God. Describe they it to me. They, so it's one of them comes up and nuzzles against the other one and then moves it off balance a little bit to the point where it steps away a touch and the one that was leaning on it falls over and rolls over on the ground. And then they just kind of like squawk at each other and raise their head crests. It's very cute, and I imagine we'll see it happen a bunch. Anyway, oh. this thing, this is adorable, and it's oh my taller God. than the, a grizzly bear. The goat hunting animation, holy it's shit. also fantastic. What, what they do, I missed, god damn. They like <laughs> grab it in their mouth, and they like jump and land on their side and then toss it. I think they kick it with their feet, maybe? Yeah. Is it, that what they're doing? It, the, awesome. They kick it with their feet so hard that they lose the grip with their hands, and it goes flying. Ooh, well, well as, as it's feeding Dalton, can we zoom in on its mandible? I can. I oh, go that's a perfect shot. Hand. Um, Cam, can engage. Person, but just yeah. a nice little so while, while I said before that as far as described material on Utraptor goes there's not a lot uh, we do and we do have big toe, toe claws but a feature of the mandible that they do ah. get in this model is that the anterior tip of the mandible the very front is downturned down mm. Jesus Christ downturned um, and the teeth are slightly pro procumbent yeah Which and is just that cool, is and I like uh, that so that's not a feature of the holotype. That is a feature that's of a referred think, specimen. Yeah, there's a lot of referred material in Utah that's in the collections of the Brigham Young University um, Museum. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that stuff's currently under study. Um, I wasn't even able to really look at it when I was there uh, this spring because I think papers are pretty close. Um, and I don't remember if it's the, one of those specimens or maybe something coming out of the block that shows that downturn. But that downturn is actually something that people don't talk about a lot, but it's common to a lot of dromaeosaurs. Um, it's it's very common for the first tooth to be slightly procumbent. Oh, here's a hunting animation. Oh, yeah. oh this it's, is great. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, that's wonderful. It's in, it's in, is it in Sornithlestes? I don't remember offhand, but Kuru does it. Velociraptor yeah, does it, I think. Um, yeah, very slightly. Very slightly. It's never incredibly pronounced, but it is slight. Um, Shanag does it. A lot of, lot of Dromaeosaurs. Yeah, I mean, Velociraptor, it's like really... It's pretty gentle. Can, oh, it's gentle can, I, yeah. can I also say that I think this is one of the first, like, eating animations I've seen where it very, very much uses the side of its jaws. Yeah. That, like, a lot of them, they just kind of, like, put their mouth in and pull out something. But these guys go in with the side and are, like, slicing meat off and then eating it. Oh, the eyes are so good. God. Like, like the yellow eyes. Um, do we have any? Oh, my God. That Look at, look at the feather... Like just the feathers on the forelimbs. Which uh, okay, uh, like if we if we look at this, this is the only dinosaur in the game that gets the feathers one hundred percent absolutely correct on the hands. Like uh, they attach all the way down the second do digit. Do they? They do. Yeah. The whole way down, and you can even if down you this, like knuckle. If that's pretty if, cool. If you look at the first digit as well, it has fuzz on it. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. super let me, let me cool. Pervert cam, hang on. Pervert cam. Um, so yeah, Utah Raptor. Just just some more cool, neat facts about Utah Raptor, because we're here to talk about neat facts. Um, when I was a kid, I was like, "Oh my god, this was friends with Deinonychus." They mm -hmm. were friends. Um, but Utah Raptor is older than Deinonychus uh, by a lot. By a lot. <laughs> it's from a very different fauna. Um, they I blame Raptor Red for the, that. Yeah, which is a great book. Like, no hate. I reread it a bit ago. Appreciate. But yeah, so they're both from the Cloverly, right? No. No. no Utah Raptor Cedar Mountain. Cedar Mountain. No, God Deinonychus damn. is from the Cloverly. If there's nothing from... I'm trying to think. Cedar Mountain is... Hold on, now I need to check because I confused myself. So it's from the Cedar Mountain Formation, which is a... The Cedar Mountain Formation is probably, based on my understanding... Something that might in the future be redefined as a group with subsidiary formations within it, because it's a lot of time. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's three. Ma it's like three or four major ones. Like there's the yellow cat, um, um, Ruby Rash, and the poison strip, or the and post poison strip. Yeah, yeah, and you turn and the, from... the mustn't touch it. The mustn't yes, touch it's the, the youngest. Yeah, that's where right. Moros is from, right? Yeah, um, that's where Lindsay Zano, who is my postdoctoral supervisor, for those who don't know, that's where she's done a lot of work. Um, you know, I and, was thinking, sorry, yeah. I, I think I might've been thinking of Moros. Oh, when, when I was thinking of the other thing from here and I got that flipped up with, with, uh, the Cloverly anyway, ignore me, but yes. Yeah, so they lived at very different times. Um, that was kind of it. <laughs> it's 130 million years old. It's actually, it's one of the oldest dromaeosaurs, uh, we have good fossils for. I mean, what's a definite dromaeosaur that we have old that is older? Some teeth, <laughs> so, right? I mean, like I think in terms of body fossils, this not is much. right. This is the oldest, or if I, if I'm having a brain fart right now, which is possible, it's not apparently the most basal, but it is no. really old. But um, yeah, and, and part of it's, I mean, it, it coming out. I think you dromaeosaurs probably evolved at some point, right in the late Jurassic. Right, like or, every uh, other group of theropods. Or maybe even in the early Cretaceous, because while dromaeosaurs are originating in the middle Jurassic, like like those early forms are not all big, scary, and in the case of Utahraptor and Eudromaeosaur, something that we've talked about and that I believe and is also widely kind of discussed in the literature is that this is a group of secondarily, like, mac like they've, they've re-evolved being scary macro predators, uh, mm -hmm. whereas earlier ones... Uh, possibly we're doing smaller prey and maybe our secondarily flightless possible maybe but yeah right. god, like, I, cool. I mean, oh my god so cool but yeah it, it's from so old like the the lower um 
the yellow cat member where this is found is like Valanginian. Oh, like this is close to the Jurassic. Oh my, oh my god, they're so cute. <laughs> I love him. And they're and again, this is another one that's kind of like model. Like it could be, I don't want to say it, like it could be any size because it is. It's stocky, and that's also that's another thing that they get right is that this is not like a long limbed and gray silent animal. This is a mm -hmm. big stocky boy. Um, and probably was not a very fast, long distance runner. Mm -mm. Uh, he's he, they're 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 coming from a from out of nowhere, and then the fact that they're the size of like a bear is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for him. Yeah, these guys dead. these guys were birds of prey that were the size of grizzly bears, Fun. which is just an absolutely horrific idea. And Utah Raptor is also. To not bury the lead, it, Utah Raptor is my favorite dinosaur, and it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one, and this is. I'm not even joking. I think this might be my favorite representation of it. Yeah, this is astoundingly good. I can't believe this. I can't I, believe what I'm seeing. I cannot believe that. Like, like viewers might be noticing that. Like, I've barely looked up to where the cameras are. This whole thing, I've just been staring at this, just kind of with a big <laughs> dumb smile on my face this whole time. He's been it's looking just, at it for five hours now. Yeah, it's like so beautiful. It. I didn't expect a DLC for Jurassic World Evolution Two to give me a design of an anim, uh, of of an animal that makes me go like, God, yeah, this is reminding me of why I love dinosaurs. But like, well, there it is. It's this, so pretty. It might be. I'm just thinking about, especially like, I mean, feathers are hard to capture in CGI, and this one does such a good job with it. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm thinking. In thinking of recent documentaries, I'm not going to count ones for which, like, they didn't have the tech for it. This is such a better Dromaeosaur representation than any of the recent ones I've seen, in my opinion. Aesthetically, I like it much more than the prehistoric planet one. And the life on our planet one, texture-wise, looks kind of dumb. Like, I don't know, it, it nails, like, I mean, like you just said, it nails the vibe of, like, it's a bird of prey that's huge. Like, they've got the eyebrow, they've got, like we said, like Alex pointed out, like the yellow eyes, like, perfect. The colors like, are really detailed. Like, it's fantastic. And I saw it pointed out elsewhere on, on the internet, but it's also, like, the leathery texture around, like, it still has the Jurassic aesthetic to it. Mm -hmm. Like, the, yeah. the face, it, it looks, it's so, it's I, so I'm, good. I'm, so, I'm sorry, it, it might have caught the light a little bit there. Dalton yeah. have the wings on this one iridescent. There's a couple they of them that are. are. Yeah. Oh my like, god, that's a oh, oh, are so good. Oh my god, they so like you guys kind of cut me off earlier when I was talking about the feathers on the head because it did the cool cool goat kill thing. Um or something else. But like that doesn't sound like I've anything. been paying a lot of attention. That's so why I'm sta I'm staring over here, viewers, because that's where my phone is and that's where I'm streaming this. Um the feathers on this thing are so well done. I'm thinking like they are honestly better than the feather pack things that have feathers. Like they're per like they're iridescent. They're moving independently. Like it's phenomenal. They're so good. Look at the way I, the light comes through them. Yeah, it's oh it's unbelievable. It's so good. Do they show up in the shadows? No, That's, they don't. I, uh, are you sure yeah, about that? I'm sure. No. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we'll take what we can get. That. Oh no, the arms! You can see his arms. <laughs> we we'll take what we can get. Don't look I at know, it. I know, but no, yeah. <laughs> so it can't hurt you if you don't see it. One of the one of the things that I that's fine. It makes up for it. One of the things I do I do want to say about this design is just a little bit of very uncharacteristic for the skeleton crew. Some vocab pedantry here. Um, is that I've heard a lot of people on uh, on social media talking about how this is an incredibly accurate reconstruction of this animal. And I'm not sure if we can really say that because of how little we know about this animal. What I will say is this is an incredibly scientifically rigorous reconstruction of this animal, and we just happen to not know a lot 
about how it would have looked in life. Right. Like I'm, I've done some work with the holotype of Utah Raptor. There is so little there. And all yeah. of the other material that's been referred to it has not been described yet. So like, I think this just goes to reinforce Scott's point of, we know nearly nothing about the life appearance of Utah Raptor, but this is an incredible reconstruction of what a large dromaeosaur could look like. And it's clearly based on a lot of references that have estimated what Utah Raptor would look like based on other animals that are related to it and what we know about the undescribed fossils. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really, really well done. I guess it, it, it is now that I now that I'm like thinking about it, it as weird as it sounds to say with such a I would say like like scientifically based and very restrained design. This is a very this is an incredibly speculative design as well because of how little we actually know about the animal. But right. it, it's showing that speculation about, in paleo art because this is a piece of paleo art. This is just absolutely mind-blowingly stunning um that speculation in paleo art doesn't need to be covering this thing in like weird soft tissue structures or anything like that like this is like e e even the color patterns are very grounded and realistic that like a lot of these patterns are very obviously based on something like a philippine eagle or something like that or some of the more um like striking birds of prey like they aren't bright colored but they are striking like that one's the closest that we get to a brightly colored one and it's still very subdued that I, is still I an animal it. that could be a ambush hunter but it is still like it has that that like cape on it and just good lord I, I think that there's an interesting point that Scott brings up here about the difference between accuracy and verisimilitude. Yes. Ooh, and I right, good word. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I love verisimilitude. And I think that verisimilitude is actually what a lot of people are talking about in a lot of cases of like what's an accurate design or something for a, for a dinosaur or like in historical dramas or any sort of media that deals with reconstructing something that we can't see in the real world. Right often what people are looking at is does it feel like it's real right. and i think when you have high verisimilitude when it has the appearance of being true that can actually mask something that is more accurate that does not convey that very well there are a lot of dinosaur reconstructions that are accurate but don't feel real and i think there's no way to really evaluate independently like how much this matches what utah raptor really looked like you know we'll we'll know one day when we describe all the good fossil material but as of now, like this is based on all the evidence that we have, but it certainly feels like what it really was like. Yeah, this has no, high verisimilitude. I think that like the Napoleon movie just came out recently, and I think this is you know people are always complaining or discussing online like how accurate is the movie. I think it's one thing that Ridley Scott movies always have with their anything for better or for worse. They always feel really real because he's got a really detailed approach to production design. So like right. every uniform looks great. It looks like it's a real, you look like, it looks like you're really back there. That can trump actually depicting events as we know they happened because um, it feels real. Yeah. And There's, I think that's what Jurassic Park has always done very well. Yeah. yeah. And just to pitch it, if, if you, there's, uh, does anyone watch Austin Che? Yeah. He's got a very good video about that and like historical dramas and like the importance of it feeling versus like, like if people have the right buttons on their coats and stuff, it's important right. to feel. Um, now I think, I think we could, I don't, I, I have one other thing in, in case people are going to, I feel like we should get into ranking it that I'd like to say. So does anyone else have anything else? I do I have a single oh, okay. criticism. Oh, keep that Scott. for the ranking part, sir. Okay. Yeah, I so I mean I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed these are pitch deepened versions of the Velociraptor yeah. sound effects. That was my only criticism. Well, I really? think that they yeah are, they yeah. are. It's it, like when it came out, it did the Velociraptor bark, but it's just like it's like Velociraptor's older brother is yelling for it. Velociraptor's <laughs> dad wants it to come home for dinner. I, oh. it's I think a very nice nod. I assume it's deliberate. Uh, 
to the idea that this is the real Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Yeah, because um, it is. Well, because it, it's not. I mean, if you if you go in the <laughs> it is if, enormous. depending on head cannons, right? Depending on head cannons, sure. It is so much bigger than the Velociraptors in the movie. Yeah, uh, like. Yeah. The Velociraptors in the movie are like they're proportioned differently than a real Dromaeosaur. Like they're about as tall as a Raptor. They're nowhere near as massive. No, um, no, because they they were kind of like almost like the old depiction of Utah Raptor of basically like Deinonychus but big. Right. Like they're they're not grizzly bears. Right. They're no. they're like as heavy as maybe a big dog. Which I I, you, I will say before before you finish this point. I think that it might be fun to uh, like nail in on that point uh, for the end of this as a big celebration. And we should delete some fences and see how these things hunt people because they have a spectacular human kill. Oh, absolutely. We should do that. Amelia, what were you going to say? Well, my point is, I was going to make a joke that's now irrelevant. I was going to say, would you say that the the Jurassic Park Velociraptors might be proportioned similarly to a man in a suit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure. in some cases, yeah. Like yeah, I think that's probably part of why they were designed the way they are. We also, you know, didn't have as many complete dromaeosaurs yeah. to go off of when, you know, I mean, Deinonychus was like a bunch of specimens that had to be reconstructed. But, like, the only really good complete one was the Fighting Dinosaurs Velociraptor, and that was in Poland. But but I think you're right. I think a lot of the designs were like, how can we get a guy to crouch into this? I just must say, I yeah. hate ever discussing Utah Raptor as the true Velo- Jurassic Park Velociraptor, because A, yeah, we don't know anything that. about it. B, it's way bigger. And C, maybe most importantly... Um, it wasn't discovered until the movie was almost out. Yeah. And so it was not the inspiration behind it. No, like it wasn't. I've seen that parroted a lot that you, it was actually inspired by Utah Raptor that to make it that big. It's like, no, they coincidentally in 1992 found an enormous Dromaeosaur. And then they immediately joked, oh, my God, we found Spielberg's giant raptor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then oh, apparently we, we, we never said what his name meant. Sorry, go on. Oh, oh. Utah Raptor? Really f-ing hard. Well. If you can't figure it out, unsubscribe. Oh, I don't think we did that for Gigantoraptor either. Weird. Yeah, Weird. yeah. I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. The yeah. big feet and the Utah. Well, feet. so Utah Raptor is <laughs> Utah Raptor Ostro- Ostromai, right? Ostromai. 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 Which yeah. also, I think our viewers can probably figure out. Yep. Um, it's named after John Ostrom and Chris Mays. The Raptor Man. Chris- Right. Um, it was going to be named Utah Raptor Spielberg Eye. And was then, it really? Yes. But apparently there was some issue with... Um, so the Wikipedia page says that there was no agreement that could be reached on how much money Spielberg was going to donate. Um, mm. From what I've heard, this was not actually a Spielberg issue, but it got tied into legal stuff with Universal because the movie was coming out. I see. And I think, like... I mean, at some point, Universal tried to trademark or copyright the word Jurassic, to which thankfully the copyright courts were like, you can't copyright that word. We're sorry. Like, you, you're it being very stupid people. here. It belongs to the scientific community. But I think that the issue was more that, like... It belongs in a museum. Universal wanted to be involved somehow. How much money could be given? What would the press stuff be? And it became too much of a nightmare, so they just gave up mm. on the idea. Um, but it was going to be named after Steven Spielberg, which would have been cool. Um, but yeah I think it's just worth saying for anybody in the audience who's not clear this was found after Jurassic Park had already been made and mostly filmed and edited it did not inspire the Jurassic Park Velociraptor but coincidentally it was the first super large Dromaeosaur that even was anywhere near that size class that we knew about yeah Um, yeah and yeah I think it also bears repeating that it is bigger than the Jurassic Park Velociraptor I think it gets modeled it gets muddled and people kind of forget how big Utah Raptor is because they think of it as the Jurassic Park one, which the Jurassic Park Velociraptor is Deinonychus. It is bigger, but like not outstandingly so. Right. Can I think the biggest difference the, is that it's taller. Can you release a Velociraptor for, for reference? Uh, yeah, I'm curious to I'm know. I'm curious, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how they scaled it. 
Can, and, can, can we also just... Oh, sorry. Amelia, go, please. Well, I think they deserve a treat. Oh, you mean that's, that is fair. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, 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 I will say that... Can we all just agree how much of... We were talking about design philosophy differences uh, with Tarbosaurus there. Can you guys believe that this is in the same game as the f- Dinocus? <laughs> Oh no, God. I can't. No. Let's not talk about that. I like that because it's the U. It's like right next to Velociraptor in the species thing now. But as you do this, I just want to, I just kind of want to rattle off one last quick thing, which is that as we talked about with uh, Gigantoraptor, right? Like it seems like golly, these giant, horrible bird monsters keep showing up. And within Dromaeosaurs, you know, a group that's also, again, characterized by generally being a smaller, bo- smaller bodied group of theropods. Utraptor is not the only giant theropod, though it is almost certainly the best known, which, based on our earlier conversation, yikes. Oof, even. Right. Um, uh, for, for size comparison, please look at the screen. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Good lord, it's so much bigger. <laughs> that is a pretty... That's great. Get him. Get him, Utraptor. Get him. But yes, so there are other giant dromaeosaurs God, known. Built uh, so different. Things like Ostraptor, which aren't as massive as Utahraptor and are kind of th- mm-hmm. thinner and fishy. But they're surprisingly um, big. Like, Ostraptor? Yeah. yeah. Like, when I saw yeah, the no, skeleton of Ostraptor, I, I was like, I don't oh mean my to God. Like, undermine. No, in uh, linear dimensions, I mean. Yeah. And then uh, in addition to that, there is that uh, kind of the rumored giant dromaeosaur from... Oh, where is it from? The Uzbekistan? Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan has not really been, you know, taken, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, and then there's also some large dromaeosaur material from the Hell Creek uh, mixed in with turtles and <laughs> over Um which may or may not be Dakota Raptor. But, I think we're getting a fight. Oh, and I'm frozen. That's fine. It is something that has, appears to have evolved several times within dromaeosaurs, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a little, little glitch there. Let me see if I can catch this hunt. Oh no. <laughs> oh, missed. Nope. It's, it's just drinking. Sometimes they drink out of the ground. There's water. What that's, to do? that's what they call groundwater. Hey. Do you want to go for the fight? Nope, um, it missed it again. Oh, the Velociraptor was killed. Oh, oh. Wait, wait. oh no. Uh oh. Suppose you're wondering how I got here. Oh no! Oh no! He's getting stepped. Oh, buddy. okay. <laughs> the, actually, okay. The only other thing I might say is a, a very slight negative on this design is I think that the the killing claw is a little small. Oh really? Can we it zoom does in? look at this one at the lake like, edge here. Let's zoom on in. Yeah, it is pretty small. Like, it's only a little bit bigger than the... Huh. Yeah, it looks like it should, might need some car- a little more keratin on it. Yeah. yeah. Right, Jimbo? Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, it, it, it should be really, really big. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I remember I'm choosing to ignore it, though. Yeah, yeah oh, I, uh, me too. That's... Yeah. We I don't... Gotta, doesn't the m and have a cast of one? It's, like, ungodly I've, large, and it's in one of the A lot of people cabinets. do. I have yeah. one. Get oh, it. yeah! I remember it's seeing it. It just it's, zoomed it's, by. We had for the camp meeting. I gave a paleo tour, which I decided to do with the the goby lizards because I'm like, those are the most interesting besides the mosasaur lizards that we have, and there's more of them, and it's easier to just go there. Um, but for some reason, the Velociraptor cabinet was open, so I also got to show people that, which is funny because um, the response that it gets every single time is gasping because no right. one, I never I never say what it is before I open it you know yeah it's right. I mean yeah it's the, the I think the toe claw of Utah Raptor is longer than the skull of some Velociraptors yeah uh, I think so yeah it's pretty big yeah. mm-hmm. uh, I'm surprised well, it's that small I was gonna say now scale that up to this one. this animal and I think I mean even <laughs> with keratin I think the problem is that the animal is so large that it looks small. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Yeah. I remember um, as a child, it was when we did my 
Uh, when I was in first grade, we would, uh, did a road trip to Dinosaur National Monument and visited a bunch of dinosaur museums um, in and around the area, and like Vernal and Fruta and, and kind of all around that part of the country. Um, and one of the souvenirs we got was a cast of the Utah Raptor Claw. And it was like, it's really flat, but just humongous. No, that's yeah. the and one I think, I think the AMH has. It's even, different. Even like taphonomically flat to a degree. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just like, um, like yeah, obviously no. it is a pretty thin claw, but. So are we, are we setting them free? I think Let's it might be time to set them free. Set them free. Let them, let them fight. It's not a fight. I was going to say. Let them kill. Amelia, you wanted to give him a treat. Let's give him a treat. Let's delete some other fences, too. Let's, let's let everything have some fun. When worlds collide, <laughs> you can run, but no can hide. We'll also delete the monorail, so hopefully no one's on the train. <laughs> what is this, America? <laughs> <laughs> All right, chaos and ensues. Transit. This, is, follow, this is my chaos oh, theory. Pause. I'm going to go back to a Utah Raptor. So we can follow this around. Um, are we ready to rank Utah? Raptor? I am very I, much am. I I need to rank it. I must. Oh, the guest comfort is low. Why do you think that is? Well, <laughs> grizzly bear-sized bird of prey walking towards me. I'm uncomfortable. It could be the, it could be the monstrous dinosaurs. Um, it could also be the fact that I gave them no amenities besides bathrooms and trash cans. Oh, what else do you need? You know, I went to Jurassic Park. And one of the scariest things I ever saw did break out and kill everybody. But it was also very hard to find a place to pee, which became an enormous issue when I saw a loose u trapter and <laughs> myself and could have used a place to clean up. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, Utah. I actually Eat killed him. somebody. Utah Raptors. Eat him. Eat. Oh, God. Are they going to get killed by a... Oh, no. Well, okay, while we are waiting patiently for this giant horrifying killer monster to actually be a horrifying killer monster. Here, I'll delete some more fences. Because for some reason, everyone's walking on the employee path instead of the guest path. Because they're trying to get away from the killer monster? Riders on the store. Oh, here they go. They're converging. <laughs> God, it, it's, they're just like a battle squadron. Oh, no, the, the people are disappearing because the, the path is no longer connected to the entrance. I'm in hell. Hang on. The, the huge raptors are running the, into them at such high speeds that they're just disappearing. Oh, we've okay. got a well, fight. Yeah. Let's, let's rank this, because it, it doesn't seem like we're going to get a good... No. no, and it's time for bed. A good kill. Amelia. Right. Yeah. Do the so, honors. I have a proposal. Uh oh. I know earlier I said that evil things don't belong in H tier. But this evil thing is soft. Mm. Yeah, it's true. I, mean, I don't we, I don't think this is evil. That's fair. You can think that. Um this is like He's up to no good. Look at no, no, it's evil, but it's perfect. So it go I, I would like to, to petition that we give it, that I give it an H. Excellent. You'll have no complaints from me. Um, Who's next? It's me and it's beautiful. I love it. And I think I don't really perceive it as evil. It's certainly not malevolent in the way that the Gigantoraptor is. I don't know if I trust this entirely, but it's kind of like it's like a shifty person who might help you sometimes if it's in their best interest. Whereas I think Gigantoraptor, if you say, hey, I need like I need a little bit of money. Can you help me out? Gigantoraptor would rob you. <laughs> Drug you, bring you back to its house and hunt you for sport. Right, exactly. Whereas, you know, I don't think Why Utah Raptor would this? necessarily do this. Um, H tier. It is an amazing, amazing design. I love it. I'm so happy it's in the game. And it looks like it might finally hunt a person. Or no, maybe I think it's going. It's, it's going to fight the Tarbo? Something odd's happening. Something odd's no, happening. But it's on, it's on a mission. It's thirsty. It's on H a mission from anyway. God. H for yeah, this is. Like. 
I know I, I, I say that, like, Utah Raptor's my favorite dinosaur. You, you, this Utah Raptor is my favorite dinosaur in this game and is my favorite depiction of this animal. Um, I cannot, I, I, like, I almost wish that I could, ooh, Utah and Utah violence. Um, I almost wish that I could give it something higher than H tier because of how much I love this thing, but, like, it is, it's perfect. Like, it gives me the, it really does give me the same, like, dangerous but noble vibes that a bird of prey does, where it's like, I am not scared looking at it, but I wouldn't want to touch one without some serious, some serious armor. Mm-hmm. But it is, it's incredible. I love it very much, and it is, it is such a high age tier for me. Okay. Well, this is off the bat. I'm going to say it's an H tier because it is a friend. It has the behaviors of a friend. It is soft like a friend. And I think uh, we would be buds. And that I wouldn't end up on, like, local news. Like, a uh, local idiot attempted to keep uh, an eagle the size of a small elephant. Uh, and he's now in several places. <laughs> I think we'd get along just fine. That's all. That's. Did you give a letter? He said H. I said H. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I missed that. All righty. Um, well, that puts. What about Dalton? I guess I won't read it. What about Never Dalton? mind. <laughs> There's only four members it, of the skeleton crew. Every actually. single time we've done this, we have forgotten somebody, and I think three out of the four times it's been Dalton. Yep. I'm so sorry, correct. Dalton. I didn't it's forget okay. Dalton when it was my time. You know who didn't forget Dalton? Pedants. <laughs> Um, no, um, now I'm going to be the contrarian of the group. No, I'm not. That's, this is H tier. This is amazing. This is such a good design. Like, I think this is on par with Concavenator, which I also gave H tier as, as being two of of, another on the upper echelon of best theropods in this game, best theropods in any game. I, I was about, I, I will admit that I toyed with the idea of punishing it for the velociraptor sounds it makes for the pitch down ones when i first heard it i was like oh i wish they would have given it a unique sound Me but then too. the more i thought it, but the more i thought about it the more i'm like i actually am glad they didn't because like i think the dinonychus sounds like a, a, a pitched up velociraptor and i think it's kind of stupid and bad um but they're kind of keeping a, a design language for the the dromaeosaurs and whereas like pyroraptor kind of sounds like nothing like I, you can't help but say that like Velociraptor really Velociraptor really nailed what Jurassic Park sounds like. Jurassic Park really nailed the sound design on Velociraptor. Like it's mm. a tremendous achievement in sound design that's iconic beyond words. And I mean I think that's just what Dromaeosaurus sounded like. And so I think they actually just went back in time and recorded it and they got it right. So Yeah, H perfect well, well that's for real fun. this time that puts Utah Raptor in an incredibly well deserved H tier <laughs> it was a poor time to go to the one that was fighting a Tarbosaurus <laughs> yeah you did uh, it has been a difficult Tarbosaurus fighting season for Giant Bird um okay I think the video's over. Yes. Please. But it's not quite over yet. Because really? I want to thank our patrons. And thank especially you, patrons. our patrons at our highest tiers. These are our Gorgosaurus tiers on up, who are extremely generous and really do a, you know, a huge amount of... Um... I'm going to restart that. I'm so tired. Um, I want to thank our patrons now, and I want to specifically thank, by name all of our most generous patrons who do so much to uh, help us do what we do and keep the Skeleton Crew channel running and making more and, I hope, better videos for you guys uh, every week. And those patrons are, in the order Patreon gives me their names, Benjamin Seepser, nickname 3110, Philip Fico, Andrew Niddle, Christopher Bellis-Jones, Adam Olos, Dan O'Kyrus, King Zashu, Max Ironpaw, 
original username, Pythonic, Swamp Ape Science, and Wheat. All of the, our patrons will have their names scrolling now in the uh, in the credits to the video, and I want to, as I do in the end of every video, remind you that if you like our videos and you want to help support us and keep our videos coming and keep allowing us to make more and better and more like kind of varied videos on a lot of different topics, um, please consider supporting us on Patreon if you can. Uh, it means a lot and it does a long way, or it goes a long way in helping us keep doing what we do. And we really appreciate the support you give us. But if you can't, that's obviously okay. Um, but please remember to like this video and comment on it and subscribe and uh, do all those little things that help us find more skeleton crewmates and uh, help increase the audience of our channel because that's what we really want. I'm so tired, Amelia. I see your text. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. It's uh, just, it's, uh, I'm glad we're over now because you need yes. it. I need it desperately. All righty. Um, I need it. I need it. Anyway. Good night, for all of you. everybody. Good night. We're so tired. And we got to edit this. Well, Scott has said it this video. I was about to say, who's tomorrow. this we? Yeah. yeah <laughs> this, this we in this case means Scott. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you guys for watching. Please let us yeah, know if you agree in. with our yeah. rankings, uh, what your thoughts on these animals are, what you're going to do with them in your park, and all of that. We look forward to seeing all of your comments. Um, yes. And Alex doesn't look forward to seeing them, but we look forward to his misery <laughs> when he reads them all anyway. So please comment things that will specifically annoy him. Don't do that. Well, do whatever you'd like, actually. Do it. Do it. All do right. it. Do it. Thank you, guys. This is the Have Skeleton a good night, everybody. Crew, Bye. And we'll see you next week for our one-year anniversary video. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. It's a good one, folks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. I wonder what one needs to do to do field work in Las Hoyas, because I, I can think of few things worse than digging up the most amazingly preserved fossils in the beautiful... In like, Spain. In rural Spanish Spain. Countryside. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's like right next to Cuenca, which is where one of the places I was going to try and go on my collections visit. And Jacques visited um, Jacques visited the collections, I believe, in Cuenca, yeah, which is apparently like an old Roman fort town, mm -hmm. and is positioned strategically on this river and is one of the most beautiful places he said he's ever been. I want to go back. <laughs> Spain is one of when I was briefly thinking I was going to do my PhD in Europe. I was really mm -hmm. excited to get to visit Spain a lot. Like there was a part of me that wanted to just be like, you know what? There's a reason the Romans were desperate to take this place over. They liked it there a lot. Well, and to do to you Spanish right. ladies, farewell and to do, fair ladies of Spain.